Cody. What's up, Jose? You okay? Jose, what's up, man? What's up, brother? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good. Right, can you good. can you turn it up a little louder? Uh, you got you got you put on a goatee for us. We got a clean <laughs> shave and everything. <laughs> Get it out. Can is that loud enough? Yeah, I'm you're good now. Facial hair. You're good now. Yeah, you look like a kid. <laughs> he is. He is. How old are you? His How old do you think I am? I'm, I'm 23. 23. Yeah, yeah you, look, you look about 23. He could be you He go. could be your grandson. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you, Mike? You're, you're getting up there, right? Yeah, I'm 31. Oh, you're still young, dude. Still young. I mean, yeah. getting up there every year, I guess, but still it's, pretty young. It's the bald head that throws me off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you it gives you more of a mature look, but if, if I shaved, I look like I'm fucking, like, probably Brandon's well, age. Yeah, Mike, you've, you've, been been bald, bald. you've been bald since when? Oh, man, since I was, like, 18. I started young. I started balding, like, very fast. <laughs> yeah, you can't have it all. You can't have it all, exactly. No. You can't have it all. Is that your backyard, man? It looks fucking beautiful. Yeah, I'm in the jungle. <laughs> I'm out on my deck. It's, it is beautiful. It's nice and quiet. Nice. Are you in a suburb in Boston right now? Yep, yep. I'm, like, a uh, half hour north. And what, what is that considered? What suburb is that? Peabody. Peabody. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hey, boy, you, been, never... you been here? Have you always nah, been in Boston? I've never been. Have I always been in Boston? Yeah. Pretty much. My whole life I was born here. I, I, you know, I went to school in New Hampshire, and I lived in Baltimore for a year. I lived in oh, Chicago. Nice a little bit as a, as a child, as a, as a baby. But, um, yeah, most of my life here in Boston. Okay, right on. Baltimore's a tough area. Yeah, yeah. I, so I, in Baltimore, I lived also about a half hour north in the suburbs in a yeah. town called Cockeysville. Okay. Cockeysville. <laughs> Cockeysville. Yeah. So, so are you a Red Sox fan then or what? Of course. Oh, yeah, okay. I I don't know. Some people from Boston don't like the Red Sox. It's like in New York. Some people from, from New York don't I, like the Yankees. I, I find a lot of people from Boston are super patriotic. Like I've been watching patriotic. I've yeah. been watching episodes and I've been dying to ask Nate, what the fuck is behind you, man? Those boxes are like <laughs> speakers and the speakers. The yeah. yeah, they're they're guitar amps. So I have a whole whole crazy oh. collection. Every of, time I'm uh, watching, I'm like, this guy's neighbors must hate him, man. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm in like one of these high rise buildings where there's like a neighbor on every corner, right? Like yeah. it's a one bedroom apartment that's like a little under 900 square feet. And I have literally enough amp power to uh, play Madison Square Garden. Oh my God. Oh, God. <laughs> so do you practice there? Or is it just like you're just storing them until your next gig pretty much? I practice, but not very loud. Yeah, so just yeah, yeah. loud enough to hear it. Uh, occasionally, so it worked out well. There's a guy that lives below me who I met randomly through a friend. And uh, he's, he's like, he made his money in like software design. Like guy, kid's a multimillionaire, right? Maybe yeah. 30 years old. Um, but he's, he's a, a wannabe musician, like a hobbyist. And so we met somewhere else. Turns out he lives right underneath me. And so every once in a while I get a text that's like, Hey man, playing sounds good. <laughs> so he's cool with it at least, right? That's the, the kind of neighbor that you want. He's a musician at least. He can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, exactly. Dude, I had the best story. So years ago. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Jose, yeah, I did. I did. Of course. Right. Come on. Yeah. Jose warned me. This guy you can talk a dog off a meat goose. wagon. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, this is the best part of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I used to live in, in a different high rise in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And uh, that building had all underground college, uh, uh, undergrad college kids, right? So it was like a dorm. And, and so I was living there and the building had a really nice gym. And so I have a business now where I provide trainers to these high rise buildings that have gyms. So they're, they're like really expensive places to live. People have money. You have a gym in the building and I go to management and I say, look, you've got a gym, you've got residents rather than have someone off the street that doesn't know what they're doing and is going to steal people, bring my company and advertise for me. So they email all of the residents. If you need a trainer, this is who you get in touch with. Right? So this particular building I moved into because it was such a gold mine. It was just, 80% international college kids, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, Dominican Republic, just with their dad's credit card. They're all driving Beautiful. Rovers. 
going out to wow. clubs, doing bottle service four nights a week, right? So you can come and sign them up and say, look, it's $125 a session and let's train five days a week. Wow. And that one That's kid is paying you two, two grand a month, right? From that one kid. And then their roommate wants to do it and their girlfriend wants to do it. And that roommate, like, oh, sure. person, they'll get like 10 people, right? Oh, so building, I moved into yeah. that building because I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you just wake up and make money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the problem was it was basically a dorm. So I'm in this building and all of my neighbors around me are 18, 19, 20 yeah. from another country. First Brandon's time. age. My age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were throwing like block parties where they would coordinate every apartment would, would be like door open. And people would hop from apartment to apartment, right? Oh and I'm gosh. paying thousands of dollars a month to live here. <laughs> and I was like, dude, this is, this is craziness. And we're talking like they'd go to the club. Club would shut down at, at 2 a.m. After party back at my building. Oh, my god! Right? Gosh. So they're going till like 4 or 5 in the morning. Just crazy. Craziness. So, but the only reason I, I put up with it, one, for, for training these kids, because I can make really good money. And two, I could crank the shit out of my guitar amps. And, and they, they can't say shit. Yeah, nobody would care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, say something, motherfucker, and I'm going to shut down your party next time, right? I'm, yeah. really, I'm putting up with that. So what? one time I was cranking an amp, and I get a knock at the door, and I look out the little peephole, and it's like two young girls, and I'm like, oh, no. Like, I pissed them off. <laughs> so I open up the door, and I'm like, oh, girls, I'm, they're like 19. Like, I am sorry, because I was, I was being obnoxiously loud. I had like a big Marshall stack. I'm playing like Jimi Hendrix stuff. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, girls, I'm so sorry. Like I, I didn't, I knew. And they're like, no, no, no. We really like what we're hearing. Can we just come in and hang out and, and watch you? <laughs> 19? Like, no problem. I was like, this is like, this is like the Can intro I check to ID? or something. Like this shit is real. Like, this ID. doesn't happen. And, and like a day later, I didn't play guitar the next night. Took a night off. There's a note under my door saying, we miss your music. Like they slid a note under the door. Oh, holy. Afterwards. The door was the music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you play in a band before? I'm sure you did. That's yeah, so yeah. So I, that's actually what I went to college for. I went to Berkeley oh, College nice. of Music in Boston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got that from your first episode. Yeah. And, and so that was like what I wanted to do was like, mm -hmm. I'm a musician and, and I got into weightlifting while I was in college, but I still was like, yeah, it's just something I want to do for fun. I'm a musician. And so I had an original rock band uh, during college and, and after to the point where mm -hmm. we had a basically a record deal handed to us. It was called a development deal, which is like Amazing. one level below that, which is we're going to sign you and we own you, um, but we're not going to pay you yet. And we're not going to do anything like we're going to just making, I guess, commission off of like a lot of the stuff you guys are doing, the gigs you play and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and so I, I had the original band and then ever since then too, I've always done what we call cover bands, which is like, mm -hmm. um, a lot of bar gigs, which are fun, but then where you make the money are like weddings, corporate parties. Mm -hmm. So I still play to this day. Um, less though, like I'll do the weddings and the corporate parties because there's some money behind it. Um, and some bar gigs, if they're right in Boston, if I, it's like a 10 minute Uber ride and I go with a guitar and an amp and I'm there, um, less so of the, like, I've got to drive to Newport, Rhode Island, which is an hour and a half and I'm going to make a hundred bucks, you know, with three hours of commuting and four hours of playing, it doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and just, you know, like the bodybuilding lifestyle is like, I don't want to get home at three 30 in the morning. Of course, yeah. you know, I've got clients the next morning. So and I have to eat a meal when you get home. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. so I, I'm the guy like on top of my amp on stage is like uh, a shaker bottle of like a pre-workout and a shaker bottle of a protein shake. <laughs> yeah. through the night. Jose, so how did you meet Nate? Sorry, go ahead. Mike. No, I was going to say he's basically the John Frusciante of Boston. Yeah. You know who John Frusciante is? Yeah, no. yeah, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, yeah, sorry, okay. Sorry. Yeah. My bad. If it was a reggae artist, I would have known who it was. <laughs> All right, so, Jose, so how Nate, did you meet Nate? Yeah. No, yeah, no. Jose told me Nate could talk a dog off a of meat wagon, so we have to give him a chance. That's hilarious. Exactly. <laughs> how did I you meet Nate, him? Nate reached out to me because um, he was thinking of getting back into – he competed back in 04, Nate? 05 and 06. Yeah, 05 and 06 in um, – and he was getting the itch to get on stage and just didn't want to waste time 
because, you know, he's been training. He had a good physique, but he wasn't, you know, close to what he is now. And, and you know, basically just reached out and said, I don't want to waste any time. I want to um, want your experience right away. So we started training a couple of days a week and uh, he changed really fast. And uh, his girlfriend was competing. His girlfriend's a beautiful, beautiful bikini girl. And, and you know, they started, she was going to do a show. And then finally, he was just looking so good. It was like, why don't we jump into this show? And, you know, next One thing you know. Another. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he was thinking more classic physique at the time because, uh, you know, that was the hot thing to do. And, and he wasn't gigantic. Like, like he was, I don't know, 186 pounds or something. How tall are you, Nate? Uh, five eight, probably on show day. So maybe okay. five eight and a half. Uh, yeah, we're the same uh, height. If the yeah. judges ask, we're five eight. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if a girl asks, I'm like five nine, five ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, so, yeah I was maybe maybe low one nineties, but like not not as peeled as I have been the last couple shows. Right. So we knew the cutoff was going to be for his height. It could be somewhere around one eighty five or something. So we're like, well, we could do it. We'll see what happens. And he was just getting harder and fuller. And, you know, we're like, well, let's see what happens. We get to the show and basically like in local shows, they'll take a look at you and be like, yeah, you're good for that class. Well, they don't measure you. "Mm." Not really. (laughs) Not to the extent of of what it should be. Well, I I knew that in the Dominican. I wish like, I knew like that in, in the, the in the in the in the uh, like um, federation that we compete in, it's a lot more strict. I feel like then. Well, some of them are, but yeah. but yeah. this particular show, you know, depending on the numbers and they want the entry fee, because otherwise yeah. he was just doing light heavyweights, yeah. and he was like, he was like, what's the cutoff, you know, for my height? And they were basically like, you're good. Give us the seventy five bucks. <laughs> so he did both, and he ended up. Placing what second at in the light heavies? Yeah, second in light heavies, uh, second in bodybuilding. I did two bodybuilding. I did uh, masters, thirty-five and up, and light heavy, and I got second in both to like two just old, crazy-looking dudes. Like they were requalifying for nationals. One of those, like, let me just jump in and get my qualification, and yeah. then first in classic physique and classic physique masters. How old are you, Nate? Uh, Thirty-nine. What the fuck, man? It's Dude, like you look like you're my like age. Three different lives. Yeah. <laughs> How the hell have you opened forty over forty five gyms at your age and still on to like other careers and stuff? Man, so th- it's it's just been insane. Sorry, Jose, man. I no, it's, 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 I've been dying to have the. No, I'm very. Let him go. I'm gonna get a drink. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you getting a beer? Can I have a beer, coach? <laughs> So it, it basically like I'm man, I'm all in when I do something. So these last couple of years that I'm like, I'm doing bodybuilding, a lot of other stuff gets put on the back burners because I'm like, I want right. this damn pro card, right? I'm it, everything is into it. So I was fortunate early on, like I got into training. I, I started off at a Valley Total Fitness, was a trainer three years, moved up and became a, a fitness manager of a club for two years. This is and, like your early twenties? Right out of college, yeah. So okay, yeah. Um, 22 to say 26 ish, somewhere around there, 27. And, um, it was like right place, right time. When I was fitness manager for those two years at Bally's, I murdered it. Like we just, I had a small team the, the club I took over did like $15,000 a month. My first month in, we did 55,000. Oh, wow. And then a year later oh, when shit. I had to beat that 55,000, I did 90,000. So I was just, that's all I did. Like I was all in at that. I was like gamifying it. How do I get this better? How do I get more out of each trainer? How do we sell? And from there, the guy that was the GM of that Bally's club got pulled away, got poached by a guy that was going to open up a whole bunch of Planet Fitness franchises. And so he said, I want you to be my like regional manager. I'm going to open up dozens and dozens of these Planet Fitnesses. And I need a guy from the ground level. You're going to run the first club, see what it's like, and then open them. So he left and he and I had a great working relationship for two years. He, he, in speaking to the guy that was going to open all of these said, Hey, what are we doing for personal training in these things? And planet fitness, it shifted over the years when it started, they allowed it, but it was like, do what you want. 
Planet yeah. Fitness, like you could have your own in-house company, you could outsource it, or you could oh, say, sweet. I don't want to bother with it. So this guy put me in touch with the owner to come in and have my own company outsourcing the training to all of his clubs. So he had six gyms. And so I would go in, hire a manager for the club to sell the training, to manage the program, hire five to 10 trainers per club. And then I started going to some other gyms outside of Planet Fitness. Did that for a while. Got poached from my own business to do, it was a company called Blast Fitness. And the basis of it was uh, Planet Fitness at the time had just sold to a private equity company for over $600 million. Holy. And there were 35 private equity companies bidding to buy it. So one, one private equity firm won, the other 34 were like, shit, we just missed out. So two guys got together and said, let's be the next option for those 34 private equity companies. And we're gonna raise money, we're gonna copy Planet Fitness's model, but we're gonna make it better. And so we just had a boatload of money. These guys were in the world of knowing how to raise money. Yeah. So I came in at four gyms and right upon coming in, they were like, all right, we're opening up um, five gyms in Chicago next month. Get out there, staff them. And then it was, we're opening up gyms over here and there and there. And then uh, maybe five or six months in, we bought 39 Valley Total Fitness gyms and took them over in a day all around the country. Oh, so there were like Holy. 15 of them in Texas, San Antonio, Houston, Dallas, California, St. Louis, all over the place, New England. And so we opened up about 40 ish gyms or so from the ground up, like let's pick a location, let's figure the layout, let's all of that. And then we bought 39 valleys. So we got to over 80 gyms. And because I came in early, I was the president of personal training. Okay, so how old are you at this time now? Hmm. Probably uh, around 29-ish oh, to like 30. The businessman of businessmen. You know, like that's crazy. <laughs> so a lot yeah, of it so was you like, basically built that from the ground up then. I Part of it though was like, I'll tell you, like when someone asked me like, how did you do it? I was so over my head, right? I was not, <laughs> at the time, not qualified. But one of the great things, if you guys are all trainers or have trained people, is yeah. the people that we, the relationships we form, the people that we come into contact with can really benefit our lives. So at the time that all of this stuff is going on, I was still training people and I was training some really, really smart people. One was a Harvard Business School professor. And so right when they offer me the job, I don't even know how to negotiate. What do I ask for for pay? Like president of personal training, they're like, tell us what you want. You know, it wasn't yeah. like, here's what we're gonna offer you, right? So I went in with like a balls out offer, you know, like, look, I've got my own company. I don't need this job. You guys want me. You don't have anyone else. Give me this. And they agreed to it. And I was like, holy shit, I'm about oh, to make shit. a lot of money in this job, right? <laughs> and, and so I negotiated a percentage of, of gross revenue rather than like, give me this pay. I was like, they didn't understand training. They, they were just going to build gyms. And the training side of it was secondary like if it makes us some money it makes us money but planet fitness doesn't even worry about this shit so we're not gonna right this is yeah. just gonna give us yeah. a little bit of extra money to open up more gyms so i came in and it was like i want this percentage of gross revenue not net so you guys can play accounting tricks and say well we had expenses gross and that way i'm incentivized to just blow this shit up and sell training so that was how it came about but the whole time i'm like i don't know what i'm doing here you know so every hurdle along the way I was fortunate to have some really smart people that I met initially being clients of mine that I went to and was like, Hey man, I've got an issue. Like, how do I deal with this? You know, like, how do I navigate this? Um, in one end of the country, the trainers are like, when we took over the Valley's clubs, man, I don't know how well, how familiar you guys are with Valley total fitness. You know, I started there as a trainer. They had a couple here uh, yeah. in, my, in the GTA. So at Toronto one point area. they had over 400 gyms. They bought every gym out in the country. Every mom and pop around the country, they just went and bought them out. Put them Is that out. just in the States, 400? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then they were just a sinking ship, right? They just did everything wrong. And they, they scammed. It was three-year three year gym memberships. You imagine that? Imagine selling that shit. A three-year Who's going to sign up for that? Wow. People, people did. did. But they got, like, Crazy. the salesman had to That's kind of That's such a huge people. commitment, though. I feel I like know. it would be hard you for people to, to commit to. You'd have to be a really good talker. Yeah, which yeah. is what they had, right? They just had a bunch yeah. of people that they might as well be selling used cars. 
And it, it became this game of salesmanship. So fast forward years later, they're down to about 60 gyms from 400. So you can imagine the crew that's hanging on there are like beaten down dogs. You know, like they've, these people have just stuck it out. So I got to take these people on now. And not only we got to take them on, I've got to say everything that you were doing, the, what, how you were selling training, we're doing it a different way. <laughs> and so these were like old dogs. Yeah. Old dogs, right? They're like, no. Teaching them new tricks. Teaching yeah. the old dogs And, and so it was, yeah. it was a battle. So it was a lot of like going to friends of mine who are in leadership positions and saying, man, I have 39 clubs with 500 trainers that are all saying, screw you. I've been doing this for 15 years. You ain't going to tell me how to do something differently. Like, how do I unite them? How do I, like, not only them as a group, but now bring them into our system with other trainers. And so it was constantly a, I got a problem solve. I don't know how to do this. Let me ask and get opinions from lots of people. But man, was it a great time in my life because I came out of that being like, you know, it, it was, I got paid to go to business school, right? Yeah. By, by doing the thing. Pretty so much, it was a yeah. cool experience. Yeah. So are you totally out of the gyms now? Like 100%? Yeah. So I just have my business where I, um, so I did that for four and a half years. Yeah. Um, they, you know, I, I sort of alluded to, uh, I came in with a, a very lucrative employment contract that I was like, all right, they're going to pay me a percentage of gross. Well, long story short, eventually they stopped paying me what they needed to pay me. So I, I had to sue them. And um, oh, they just, it was that, just too much. They oh, just boy. didn't want to pay you anymore. <laughs> yeah, with, with, a, with a contract. So yeah. um, it ended up being like me being really burnt out of just going 110% flying around the country. I was living in hotels for yeah. four and a half years and um, wanting some balance to my life. I, I was barely working out for those four and a half years, like a couple workouts a week. I wasn't eating great. I wasn't ha I, like having relationships. Like if I'd see a so girl, business wife. That, that yeah. was all of us, right? And so I yeah. kind of, I, I wasn't playing guitar. So I was like, man, there's all these other areas of my life that I'm making crazy money. I'm getting really cool business experience here, but I don't feel, I'm not happy. I'm not fulfilled. I'm not lifting. I'm not playing guitar. I don't have, um, you had a GTR. You didn't have the balance. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty man, no, Don't yeah. skim over that. He had yeah, a GTR. I, know. <laughs> I had the sports <laughs> car. Yeah, yeah. Had yeah. Yeah. You had to so, get rid of it. Yeah. I, I chose sold it to, actually, I guess. um, What's that? Or chose to, I guess, a better way to say. So yeah, what, what happened was I moved from that building. Uh, I finally decided like, what am I going to do with, with my life? And, and I, I kind of at the time when I had this pending lawsuit that was worth a lot of money, I said, okay, say I win and I win all this money, sort of equivalent to winning the lottery. What am I going to do, right? Yeah. If, if all of us won the lottery tomorrow, what would we do? Did like, you win? Uh, it, they settled uh, okay, before. So half court, win? So. Yeah, I, yeah, one of those, one of those, you can't say the amounts, but yeah. Um, so it, it became like, if I got this money, what would I do? And it was like, well, I do a lot more music for, for the fun of it. I would still train because I love training people. I would get back into my own workouts and I started kind of plotting that life, you yeah, know, right. before the whole lawsuit was settled. And that's when I started the training in the high rise buildings. I was like, man, there's a real need for this in these buildings, you have clientele that have money that value the convenience, which is why they're living in downtown areas and paying yeah. a fortune. And there's a gym here. Like, why can't I connect trainers? So I started hiring some trainers and selling the, the, the training to the people and putting them together and managing that. So I moved uh, just under three years ago to like a crazy expensive building that I have no business. I'm the poorest person in this building. Um, but it was for, for the guys of like now being in this building and yeah. meeting the residents and being able to train them. Yeah. And, them. and, and so when I moved here, the rent was going to be so crazy. And it's right in downtown Boston where we just have everything right out our door. There's a grocery store under my building. There's just everything. So I had this GTR at this point that was like seven or eight years old, paid off. How much horsepower, Nate? Everyone's going to want to know this. Uh, five something. I think it was like, yeah, dude, it was <laughs> crazy. So I drank gas to say the least. <laughs> Crazy, absolutely crazy. So yeah. I sold it because I was like, you know what? It's going to cost me parking spaces in this building are $500 a month. 
Oh my god. It's gonna gosh. cost me five hundred dollars just to park it. American too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, the money. Rent here. <laughs> yeah, the only yeah, reason yeah. I need oh this car god. to drive is is to go meet up with Jose to lift. Like I'll take an Uber. <laughs> so I sold the car at that point, yeah, and I've been been Ubering my my ass around ever since. Nice. Jose, were you a fan of the car? You liked it? I never seen it. Oh, oh you fuck off. Oh, I'm not so a big you... car guy. I like no. trucks and SUVs and I just like being I was big for so long that I couldn't comfortably sit in a sports car. You oh, know? For All sure. right, Jose, Jose, what's your what's your dream car then? Probably like a, a raptor, a souped oh, up yeah. raptor. Nice, That's nice, nice, nice. On lifts or nice. Nice. Yeah, a nice yeah. lifted raptor too. Yeah. Oh, there's there's a Shelby version of an F one fifty too that is completely nuts. How fast is that thing? <laughs> it's bananas. It's, it shouldn't even exist. But it's, you, you but know. But it does. Uh, uh, yeah, another five, 600 horsepower truck, you know. Beautiful. Holy shit. Talking yeah. about horsepower, when you sh- mentioned in your podcast that after you shaved your long hair, you just went right up in the placings right next to right under Flex Lewis. Yeah. How did that feel? Because right after that, you were pretty much back to back, tail behind him. How many placings do you have at the Olympia? I have 10. I did 10 shows. Yeah. <laughs> 10 Olympias. Wow. Well, and crazy. they're all top 10? I was Obviously, first, I'll, I'll first call out every Olympia. Wow. Ten, 10 years in a row. Usually it's like, you know, the guys starting out for the first Olympia, they get smashed. Yeah. Uh, or this first two. But I mean, Jose definitely raised the bar on that. So good for you. No, Jose, I, what would you, six, Jose, sorry. Jose, would, what would you say was your, was your best Olympia that you came in your best that you, no, no question? 2015. 2015 that was the year i played second to flex and argued. and what do you think what do you think was the like the deciding factor and why you came in your best in 2015 opposed to the other years what did you do differently in 2015 nothing i was, Were I you was with chris? healthy i was healthy you know what yeah, yeah i was with chris i was um you know it was all those years combined of training without any injuries and you know as as soon as that olympia happened before the, I had my my knee drained a week before the 2016 Arnold, and that's when it all started. It all went downhill from there. And, um, you know, my knee was banged up because my hip was bad. So uh. a week before the 2016 Arnold, I think I still beat won that show, but Hide beat me. I placed second. I had 40 cc's of fluid dra- drained out of my knee. A week wow. before, and then a week after, I had uh, arthroscopic surgery on the knee. Now, how did that play a role on stage, like how you looked by draining all that fluid prior to the Arnold? Did that give your quads like a weaker sweep? Because it was so yes. close. It's not like it was like in the off season. The sweep was still there pretty much, but the um, striations in, in, you know, the, the outer head. The outer you were sweep. watered out a little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Actually, Chad Nichols commented on it in the um, uh, the the, the, the whatever the, yeah during yeah. the the show uh, during the live broadcast. But um, yeah, you know, being healthy is a hell of a thing. You know, when you don't have any aches and pains, and you can yeah. train a hundred percent. As soon as my knee became an issue, you know, I no longer could. I mean, pretty much for. 15 years straight, I was, I would squat 500 pounds every week. Wow. Reps, and reps, and, reps and, and deadlift five, 600 pounds every week. And it, you know, it, it allowed me to, to develop to an insane level. Yeah. And, you know, and then I was nailing my condition on top of it. So I was 41 when I won the Arnold classic and, and then I placed second at the Olympia. And that was definitely my peak year where, where everything all came together. I was injury free and, and you know, that's the key. So once I was injured, I wasn't able to train uh, at a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. But little things started changing. I was still, you know, first call out at the Olympia, but I wasn't going to win, you know, you weren't in that top two because of that. And that's hard, man. Like even for myself right now, I'm going on my second surgery in two years and I find it's like, you feel you're at the point where things are going up and then it just takes a slip of, you know, the accumulation of wear and tear, whether it's your knee or your shoulder or your elbow, 
And yeah. uh, the slope is slippery, man. Getting back on that healthy train again. Yeah. Once you have the, you know, those issues. Would you, you know, change? You can train around injuries, but it's yeah. to, to succeed at the level that yes, that the pros I are at. wanted to be, you know, um, mm-hmm. you need to be able to train without any thought in your mind, with mm. a reckless abandon. You just go for broke every workout and, and if that's what you want to be. Of you course. You can't train kind of hard. Yeah. Because you know, you'll have kind of a hard physique. You know? <laughs> yeah. You want to yeah. be the biggest freak there is. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Do you yeah. think – I? you guys talked about this on your podcast too. Um, do you think that's the biggest difference with the looks these days, why they're not as hard of a look? Oftentimes, yes. Yeah. So you think they train harder back in the day, or, or do you think that they, they train harder now? What would you What would you say? I think they definitely trained harder back in the day because mm-hmm. they were less machines. So instead More of free weights, right. Instead of squatting, well, you now have this cute machine that you can mm-hmm. lean back on and you know, <laughs> spread your feet out and squat down just a little bit. And where before you had no options, you had to go all out, you know, squats, deadlifts, bench presses, shoulder presses, push presses, clean and jerks, you know, bent rows, the best physiques would develop in a basement with a barbell and some weights. That's right. Yeah, right. And dumbbells. That's Those what I'm back to right now. That's even that's even what Mike tells me tells me now. Um, is is to, to improve. He's like barbells and dumbbells. That's the way to yeah, go. Yeah. I didn't yeah. build my physique off of hammer strength low rows and you know. Yeah, exactly. I, it was all from years and years of heavy movements, and learning to perfect them in in you know hit the muscle the right way you know when i was younger yeah. i was just lifting weights as i got older I learned, yeah. I learned how to squeeze the muscle while lifting weights i think um from watching your guys podcast and just listening to you right now i can tell that that's exactly what's happening to me right now especially since i i, I started training back in my basement and now it's just just a barbell, just dumbbells, no machines. Um, I just got a leg press today, uh, like a Cybex one, a really good one. Um, but yeah, it's just been back to the roots, kind of like retraining how to contract with the muscle and, you know, lighter weight feels heavy, you know, and you just kind of get stronger from there. And then by the time I get back up to the weight that I was using again, my form's better, my strength is better, the, the look, the overall look is better. Yeah. And even you said yourself, like, I've been looking oh, better changing. each week. Significantly, yeah. yeah. I also think that social media has played a role in how people train. Younger people coming up, they now think they can't train until the camera's ready. You know? Yeah, I don't like that. Every set, I have people that I'm training hand me a phone and be like, here. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Video you do one this? arm rows with thirty five pound dumbbells? No, I'm like unless it's going to be something worth looking at. I'm not videoing it. Yeah, exactly. nothing worth Good. looking at. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it, it's 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 really fucking annoying and and unfortunate for those people. They're not learning how to train, how to train intensely, and how to do it the right way. They're just learning how to train. There's first. so many distractions. They're worried about, you know, yeah. too many. And I'm just more recent to this because, you know, obviously, Jose, you know, when you have sponsors, you got to post. But this is yeah. more of a recent thing. If you look like 10, 15 years ago training, it was great because I-, I had a flip phone, you know, and I was just going in the gym to train and there was no distractions. I didn't have my phone on me. I had like my, my, my paper, my diary, like, you know, what I wanted to train on that specific day. And that was it. Your was, water and uh, your headphones. I was just going to ask that too. And I was going to ask you, Nate, like, do you think there's a difference too nowadays where people have their workout on their phone versus when they knew what their workout was before they go into the gym or just having it on a piece of paper where there's nothing else on the device or on the paper, but your workout. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's more people training that way. I guess the, like some there's, you have, uh, part of the gym population that does the uh like beat the logbook thing right where they come in with their notebook mm-hmm. and those appear to be the, the more serious people right that are uh um training and that they've got to beat a number obviously there's people that are on the other spectrum that are uh just dicking around you know like it's 
every every set is about finding the right angle to get the video. And I get it if you're if you're Jose's level, if you're a lot of these pros that are signed, um, you got to do something to to promote whatever you're sponsored. But yeah, not the guy in the gym that's 170 pounds. You know, like that that's the part that's a little silly, as you know, as Jose alluded to, somebody rowing 35 pound dumbbells at 15, 20 percent body fat, you know, wanting to, to get it a post for Instagram. Yeah. I guess it's kind of monkey see, monkey do. Like you're seeing the people you look up to post those videos, so you need to do the same thing. But yeah, there's there's certainly a lot of distractions just with I, I'm super guilty of it. Uh, uh, I'm always on my phone and need to 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 not do that from I'm getting text messages all the time. Or I just do this. Jose, like, you allow that? that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Let's go. Time. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I I found like I've been doing a lot of um mountain dog programs. I found myself that I really like them. But that's the one thing that um I've noticed, like when I decide to take a break from it, I just my phone's in my pocket. I don't even look at it the whole workout and I just get in that zone, you know, versus where I have to check, okay, what's the next exercise or what reps and then okay i got a notification oh no my wife texted me wonder what's going on is everything okay versus phones in the bag when i walk in the gym and i don't even look at it the music's playing yeah. bluetooth's on and i know what my next few exercises are and i just go so jose do you believe in in, in following um like a strict program all the time or do you go into the gym with kind of an idea in your head of what you want to accomplish what do you feel like is the better way and most beneficial way to train I'm glad you asked that because uh, when Nate was talking about the log book and stuff like that, those, those workouts now, now uh, like Meadows and, and JP, they're very intelligent, ineffective, um, the intelligent guys and effective programs. But for me, like if you need to write it down, you don't know how to train. Like, like in, and, and if, like I remember if I've benched 315 or 335 yeah, or absolutely. 405 or 419, mm -hmm. yeah. I know exactly what I've lifted. And I know if it's a personal best and I know when my body's ready to do it. And, you know, I think I've always trained instinctual. I've never had an exact plan. I don't have an exact plan for my clients. You know, when we come in, we start with specific warm up exercises. I can gauge where they're headed by their mood by their body by you know how they're warming up how they're progressing through the workout to how hard i'm going to push them mm -hmm. um, what exercises they're capable of doing there's some days where you know nate has a wacky back that we just cannot squat or we just cannot do any weight bearing things and we'll do a leg press we'll do lunges we'll do you know different ways to blow his legs up without you know, having them be crippled for three days afterwards. And, and that's the way I train myself. It's always instinctive. If I go in and my knees clicking and popping and fuck, and I can't, can't do it. I'll figure a way to get a pump. Now, if I have it written down or in my phone, you have to do this. Then yeah. you failed that day. Mm -hmm. sucks. You know, that yeah. workout sucks. But if I don't go in with it written down, I go in, you know what? All right. That didn't work. This is what we're going to do now. And then I kill that then that's a success. Every workout has to find a way to be a success or it's not going to be a positive experience for me or for my clients. You know, it has to be a win or it sucked, you know, or, or yeah. it was a waste, you know. So I can't have those beat the logbook type of workout, you know, especially at my age or even Nate. Nate's 39 now. Why would I have him trying to squat 500 pounds you know, to beat the logbook. All yeah. that's going to do is put him in the hospital. I want to yes. improve his physique. We can still improve his physique. He's growing like a weed now. I mean, he's 230 pounds now and still growing. I, I know from experience that 39 is still young. He's like right in his sweet spot where he can continue progressing for the next few years. So, yeah, so Nate, so Nate, I know like in the in the episode that you guys talked about, and I know you guys Nate has a lot of stuff going on outside of outside of bodybuilding, but and, and I know what you said in the podcast. But for the people that are watching this, Nate, do you plan on doing another show? Do you plan on competing, or or is that something of the past and you have new goals that you want to move on to? No, definitely, I'm I'm determined to get that pro card. Um, I don't know what I'll do after that, but 
um, until I get it, I can't move on to something else. You know, you guys okay. know, obviously a couple of you guys have it, you're going for it is last year I did uh, two pro qualifiers. Um, we kind of, my girlfriend and I did it as, as traveling trips. We went to Costa Rica. Um, that that's cool. overall winner gets a pro card. And you got a lot of shit for it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a whole other topic of, of people, you know, talking about bullshit pro cards. If you don't win it at uh, nationals or North Americans, it doesn't count. But where did so, Ronnie Coleman win his pro card? That's what tell I was you. The World Championships. Yeah, it wasn't at nationals. Yeah. So where did Dexter Jackson win his? That when, North when, Americans, right? Yeah, and Sean yeah. and Sean Roden, same yeah, thing. Yeah, North America. Yeah, they North they America. used to call that backdooring it. You know? They give us the most shit for that in Canada, especially right. because historically we've only had one pro card. So that's why guys like Fuad, guys like Frank McGrath, when they won it, they were like king of fucking Canada because that was the only pro card. The Mr. Canada was called. Yeah. So when, yeah. when they started having other opportunities to get pro cards, even one other opportunity to get a pro card, that second place pro card in the overall – guys lost their fucking mind. It was like, no, you're shit. You don't deserve it. <laughs> like, it was but that, that was a year-to-year -year thing with the judges. They felt if, granted, you were close enough in points, they would award. Like, that's what happened to me. When I came second to Paul in the overall, it was like a point difference. So they're like, you know what? Warranted, he's so close. He deserves it. They gave it to me. But the and next you'd year, been a national one. champion, though. You had been a national yeah, yeah, champion but, before that. But, but, like, the next year, they didn't do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was just based on, I guess, however the judges are viewing things from, you know. Them. Anyways, when I got back from the Dominican, I got a fucking whole lot of shit, especially because Nationals was right after. And honest to God, I think the only reason I won in the Dominican is because in my fucking head, I was preparing for Nationals. And I was just kind of doing the Dominican because, like, I, I wanted to travel. Same thing, like you said. It was like a yeah. big and there was no pressure i felt no pressure and when i even when i watched my video i could tell like i looked like like i had like no fear at all you know because in my head like the real battle was going to be nationals after anyway when i got home same thing a whole bunch of shit like oh you fucking cheated you took the back door this and that you know, it's so like, crazy to me you know it's it's like uh telling a business person everyone wants to open up their business and make a million dollars right but it's yeah. like but you can't use the internet because back in the day they didn't have the, the internet yeah. <laughs> yeah that's actually a really good that's actually a really good way to put it analogy yeah, yeah. so it's you know i did um i did costa rica because um guy jose works with uh charlie arms as, as he's known by Char charles pearson uh one is pro card at that show um the year prior so charlie's my buddy was like i'll go down and do that too i've never been to costa rica um, what did I get? I think third place at that show and yeah. uh, some really good feedback. You know, I was just super flat. So uh, both shows last year, I did that. And then I did um, Bermuda, um, the Caribbean Grand Prix, I think is, is what yeah. it was. And took second place in the light heavies of that. And the struggle for me last year is a week out from the show, I'm 210 pounds in lean. Ooh, and uh, 198. Oh, fuck. Ooh. So we're That's like right at that space where, you know, you got to cut water. I, I can suck down a little bit more, but do I want to be a heavyweight at 202, 203? Not really. So we, we sucked down a little bit more and often it involved not eating, you know, the, like, so for both of those shows, the weigh-ins was the night before the show at like 6 PM or 630 um, of like a Friday night for a Saturday morning show. So I just had to not eat all day yeah. and not drink any water or sit in a sauna just to get down to 198. And we got no time to load up. You know, you're, you're eating a meal at 7, 7.30 at night and you're on stage the next morning at 10 a.m. Even if, there's, if your stomach's okay, even if that, like... It's not enough time. Yeah, to when, when, up, I, you know? when I diet down... All right, man, have a good workout. Sorry, it's one of my clients leaving. Um, when I diet down like that hard... Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my dog, the guard dog, barking at um, my client. Hayden, uh, he's leaving. I train. Um, he's a triple A hockey dogs? player. Yeah, yeah. He's a tri triple A hockey player, and um, he was working out in the basement. I okay. uh, yeah. When I diet down that hard or deplete or start using diuretics to to make weight, 
my stomach is just a mess after like you know a little tiny bit of food and you just feel like this full this bloated or i don't know in dominican i was throwing up the night before prejudging yeah it was pretty bad so it wasn't ideal scenarios you know we we cut down to 198 we loaded up as much as we could um you know i was just peeled for for the uh costa rica show you know we got feedback from the judges they're like you're the most shredded guy on stage However, you know, were you flat? Like, we don't know you, so you just, we, you looked a little flat. I was like, yeah, super flat, you know, to cut down 10 pounds to make weight. Um, so Bahamas, we, we figured it out a little bit better, came in much fuller, you know, made weight at 198. I think I was on stage the next day at like 203. You know, we, we were able to really load up and, and be a, a really big uh, light heavy. But it's just not like for my physique, I look best when I am round. It's such, it's a night and day difference. Like Jose sees me. If I walk into the gym without a pump and then I get a pump, I look 30 pounds bigger. Yeah. It's, I'm the same way. I have to have that fullness. So the goal is to absolutely get the pro card. Um, Jose and I'll have to talk. I don't know if I'll compete this year. Uh, there's obviously going to be so many opportunities, both international, all the shows I did last year, Costa Rica, Bermuda, the shows in the States, USA's, uh, you know, all the other ones. So there's a lot of time. A lot there's a of lot time. of shows at the end of the year. Oh yeah. So there's They're a good possibility. You but know, yeah, for, Jose said the first goal for me was to, to, uh, I typically after a show would get to around 219, 220. And that was this, I just couldn't gain weight. I can get shredded really easily. I have such a hard time gaining weight. Yeah. I'm just eating all day. I'm sick to my stomach. And so Jose had kind of set the goal of like, all right, 220 is about the biggest I've been after a show, still pretty lean. We got to hit to at least 230 because I got to get on stage 207, 208, 210. You know, the goal is to be a heavyweight next time. So we're, we're pushing the weight up now. I'm holding about 230. We'll try and push up to 235. You look good at 230. Like your cheeks aren't like you don't look – like you don't have puffy cheeks no, or anything. Lean. Yeah, yeah. You're I'm, I'm I'm 222 and it's starting. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the good thing he has very mature muscle. Like, even though you know he doesn't have a long competition history, he has been training for a while, and he's got great genetics somehow. You know, whether it's right. from mom or dad. You know, I'm bringing up pictures of Nate. <laughs> yeah, very very mature muscle. I'll be right back. And, um, you know, put it, putting it all together, it's all coming together. His posing is really coming together. As you know, posing is half the battle. Like, yeah, of course. Look unbelievable. But if you can't pose, it doesn't It's useless, look. right? Right. Yeah. So his condition, now I know that his condition can get to the point where he's guaranteed to be one of the top two best condition guys in the show. Jose, so how many shows have you uh, coached Nate for? Uh, like four or five? Yeah, I think so. Connecticut Grand Prix, Cutler, yeah. and then the two pro qualifiers last year. So four. Four. Yeah. Th and that's including the Costa Rica show you were just talking about. Yes. All right. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna share I'm gonna share my screen. I got some fire up on here. Dude, look at that chest fullness. That's the that's the maturity you're talking about. Eh? Yeah, nice. Holy, shit. Holy shit. You look good, dude. Thank you. Yeah, man. Nice What's your weight here? here? That's nuts, Look, man. That was um, so two days out. So I was in the process it's of sucking there. down to make 198. Wow. So I, I, I'm guessing I was maybe 203, and I'd come down from 210. Oh. So that's even me somewhat depleted. Um, that was in the process of saying, all right, tomorrow I have to cut out all food and water just oh, to, dude. to make 198. Look at the lighting out here. Uh, yo, yeah, okay, I see that density you're talking about, Jose. Yeah, he's pretty wacky, yeah. dude. That's crazy. that's crazy. And he has, like, Flex Lewis calves. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Round calves. Who cares about calves, all right? <laughs> so if you go to the picture on the right on stage with the guy with the red trunks. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah. Guy, that guy beat him. Oh, really? <laughs> I like to show everyone this. That guy beat him because he was a local guy. Ah, uh, makes sense. Yeah. Look at the this. politics card. Yeah, watch this. Oh, he's shredded. Look at the glutes. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Nate dominated this show. Like, it was it was funny. That guy beat him. I hate seeing so shit Nate like that. Second at that show? Yeah, second place. Well, here's the thing. 
He plays second to that guy in the in the in the Masters, but then he won the Open light heavy. So that other guy didn't compete in the King Open. King cuts. Then? No, he Don't did. He beat him. He beat him in the Open. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we so were actually was... talking about this last week um, with all yeah. of that um, black guy stuff or Black Lives Matter stuff. I'm black Canadian, so it's different, right? I talk differently when it comes about it. But yeah, we were saying like, do black guys have it um, easier, or better in bodybuilding? Even sometimes that nod from the judges, because I've seen it where like the judge will nod someone based on potential and not George. based on what's actually on on stage. Have you guys seen that at all? Or I guess I don't believe did. in that. No? I believe that, you know, uh, nine times out of ten, the black guys are going to have better genetics. Yeah, and absolutely. I don't believe that they have better condition. I think sometimes the darkness um, can actually hurt them. Uh, you know, like my boy Tank Dixon, like he always seems to have this film on him or, or – yeah. You know, some of the darker guys. Like Akeem Williams Akeem, has been always yeah. knocked for that. Same thing. Always seems to have a film on him. Okay, so would I'm going to put you on the spot. Would you uh, – two guys that are tied in points um, for shape, size, muscularity, um, presentation, and the only difference is one guy you can see a little bit better. Um, his conditioning is peeled. He's the white guy. Yeah. And the black guy, he's got great shape. But we can't really tell if he's conditioned or if it's just like a lighting or a skin. Who do you give it to? Clearly the white guy. I mean, because not because it has anything to do with white. Or no, black, of course. Absolutely. But because you just explained it. You said, I can't really tell if he's conditioned. Yeah. Not sure. I can't tell. And then the other guy, I can tell, then he's going to win. Yeah, yeah, see, and that's what I think I just saw in that video on Nate's page. Like, I could see, like, glute striations. I wasn't right. there. I wasn't there. I wasn't. I never saw the whole show. But you could see, like, glute striations and feathers. And in, at, in, uh, um, in Canadian Physique Alliance, well, maybe not so much the Canadian Physique Alliance, but back before they changed federations, now it's, like, all under, like, MPC rules and MPC judging. We saw a lot of that especially at the regional shows, local shows, you know, where I, I'm a conditioning guy. So I don't care if the guy's like twice the size as the other guy. If the guy's in shape and he's peeled and the other guy is clearly not in shape, I don't care how big he is. I don't care how great his shape is. I just don't think we should reward him. I think conditioning is number one too, 100%. It's a little bit different in the pro leagues. I mean uh, – You think? And yeah, yeah, and open, absolutely. I mean, it's obviously different in two calls, but open is like, yeah. I mean, no one in, in really is like coming in, well, some guys at times out of shape, but a lot of the guys are fucking huge. And even though, let's say, I'm more shredded, the guy's got like 30 pounds of muscle on me. They're, they're going to give it to him. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? At the Masters Olympia is a perfect example of that. So if you went strictly on conditioning hard muscle, Hadi Chupan would have won the show easily. For sure. But, you know, Brandon had the beautiful shape. He had the muscularity. You know, they're, they're, they, they're all these different components that are measured, which is muscularity, shape, conditioning, presentation. And if you have more of those, you can make the argument that you win, even though your conditioning is not, uh, you know, it's he kept so his slob, but he, yeah. you know, it wasn't as good as Hottie's. And, you know, pound for pound, Hottie was even bigger than him. But when, when you see Brandon's shape, his presentation, you know. He's got a beautiful physique. Yeah, do, you think that, do you think that Brandon Curry should have won that show? Which one? Uh, yeah, I mean, he did. He, he, but, you know, would I have been upset if, if Hottie won? No. I, you know, I, mm. I think, but Hottie was actually third. Yeah. I would because I because personally from my eye I think that I mean I don't have as good of an eye as you guys but I think that Heidi should have won the show. I do too. I do too. But I'm okay with Brandon winning. Yeah. There's you know other factors. You know the the, the name Mister Olympia carries so much weight for the sport, promoting the sport, continuing to move forward. Yes. I knew you'd probably to touch consider, on that. You have to consider the guy that's yeah. going to carry that title and and. If Hadi don't speak a word of English, he's yeah. over in Tehran and he's not 
here or anywhere else for that matter, carrying the torch, then, you know, I, I don't think the judges sat there and discussed that fact. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah. It, but, it's, but it's sort of it's back of the It's definitely a big point that you have to consider, too, especially considering that most of the audience is, is, is American and, and, right. and that's, right? Would you, so I would, you, would you say there was, like, a similar or possibly any type of same bias with, like, Flex being, like, the blonde hair, blue-eyed golden boy? I don't know if his eyes are blue. I'm just saying. I've always liked to tell myself that. <laughs> you know, you also can't deny his superiority. You know, he's yes. as much as I wanted to beat him, as much as I think I did beat him. Um, for the majority of the time, he's on stage. He's the best person in the building. You know, um, it would not surprise me in the least bit if he goes on to win the Olympia this year. The Open, really, you know, wow, Come in on, the Open yeah. because yeah. of That's all those big... factors yeah. I just said. Yeah. Presentation. Yeah. He carries himself on stage as the best guy on stage. His skin is the thinnest on stage. Yeah. The way he poses, you know, his muscularity, he's going to be 8 to 10, 12 pounds bigger with that same conditioning. You know, he's going to be, it's hard to take your eyes off him. Even though you have a Keem Williams that looks like a cartoon character and is 60 pounds heavier, yeah. Yeah. your eye is going to go to Flex Lewis. And, yeah. and, and then the, the morale of the crowd of the building and everyone's getting goosebumps. This kid can win it. Oh, my God. Holy shit, he's going to win. Yeah, yeah he's going to win. And, yeah. and, and, and then you have the fact that there is not a better ambassador for the sport of bodybuilding since Jay Cutler so to, true. to go. And it has nothing to do with white or, no. or this. It's how they're, they're charismatic and yeah. how they yeah. speak to people and how they're yes. constantly 24 hours a day working the business of bodybuilding. How well, you yeah, represent it? It's, it's huge. Because Brandon Curry is a lot more vocal than – well, I don't want to say a lot more vocal. Both him and Sean aren't really on social media as much as Flex. Flex no, is but, on. Flex's stories are always like – Brennan's a family whole, the guy. Whole thing long, you know. He's always posting, so I think that goes a long way these days. It certainly does. And, and, and you know, as Mike just said, Flex is a family guy, but Flex will have video footage of him yeah. walking his daughter in the morning, yeah, yeah, or in the pool, or cooking food with his daughter. And you know, he is nonstop because he's younger too. Yeah, he, you know, he grew up that perfect time with social media. He perfected it. He had, you know, people teaching him and, and, and people working for him that, that run certain things. He's got it all nailed down. Now, if there is one guy, and don't get me wrong, he might come in and, and not knock your socks off, but I have a feeling he's gonna. And just, if someone ticks all the boxes, it's flex. Yeah. And his physique can stand with anyone. Well, like, even if you look at, like, like you said in the podcast, bigger doesn't mean better. No. Better we, means we better. We just argued uh, uh, that we all, uh, uh, me and Ben, is it Ben? We, we yeah. thought that Hadi won the Olympia last year. Yeah. Or, or possibly could have. Yeah. Now, Flex beat Hadi. Yeah. So, so there you go. You know, th there's just things he has over other people. Even those times I thought I beat him, I could rationalize afterwards by the way he walks on stage, by the way he walks off stage, the way he commands the stage. I'm on stage next to him thinking I'm beating him, yet he's telling me, looking over at me, saying, back up, back up, you're too far forward. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> even though he was the one stepping forward, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. the one controlling the stage. Yeah. And that's, that's the shit that makes him a winner. And, and you know, fuck, I know how to win too, but he knew how to beat me. Who yeah, was a winner, right. you know. And I always then, appreciated the way that you um handled those after those interviews. After you were always like, in a way, you were like, you know, I think I could have had him, but fuck, he's amazing. Like you yeah. always credited him. It's hard to be pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love the guy. I love him. He's you know, out of everyone in the sport, you know, he still to this day reaches out to me, and and we still have a great friendship, and and we always did. From day one when we met, you know, so it was, I was never like angry with him. He doesn't judge. He does everything it takes to win and to support his family and, and mm -hmm. hats off to him, man. And I Absolutely. always respected that. 
I always said I'm nine years older than him, but I always looked up to him. I was always trying to win, uh, uh, take something from him, whether it's from our conversations or our experiences together. You know, we traveled the world together and would, yeah. you know, go to lunch and dinner and, and always have great talks. And, and I always learned a lot from him. And you, you guys talked about that, about guys not competing as much anymore. Um, how they used to just do a bunch of shows after the tours. Yeah. yeah. So guys are really missing out on those relationships, those connections as exactly. well. Yes. Yeah. The camaraderie. Experiences. 100%. You know, who are you going to hang out with when you're in downtown Prague? I don't speak Czech. I don't, you know, Yeah. you go there with your, your buddies, like your competitors. Yeah. We go yeah. out and, and have fun. We have lunch together, walk around the city and see stuff. You know, we I went to New Zealand with, with Evan Senapani. That was those are memories I'll have forever, you know. Yeah. Went on tours and you know, all through Australia with Dusty Hanshaw and England with Guy Sistanino, India with Guy and David Henry and you know, we we've been everywhere. Korea, Japan and Where's where's your favorite place that you've traveled in all in all the years that you've been competing? What would you say the the one place that you went to you'd say that was probably you've had the best? New Zealand just because, I mean, it, you can't get on a plane and go anywhere further. It, it's past Australia, you know. It's it, and it is so beautiful. It, it, it's it's yeah. like a place that's only you only see in movies or you just imagine it, you know. And we got to spend a, a week there, me, my wife and I, and, and go, and, and the people there are so friendly. Islanders, yes. And, and, you know, they would, they sent us, Mo uh, um, El Musawi sent us on a tour on the other side of the island. And, and we were in those, like, sulfur pits and, and mud baths and, and did all that <laughs> shit. And, yeah. It was just That's good. amazing. That's a good experience. Yeah, it was outrageous. No assault it, rifles? No, no. <laughs> it wasn't necessary. It was very calm there. Yeah, so yeah was this different, was different different for a show? Was, that? Was, this for a, was this for a show or, or was it just a vacation? Yeah, yeah. I, I went in. I won the New Zealand Pro twice in 2014 and 2016. And um, both times, Mo rolled out the red carpet in nice. and you know, took yeah. care of me. The second time he put, sent me on a tour for a week and it was unreal. All right. So oh, if wow. I'm ever doing that show, I got to tell Mo that I'm Jose's buddy. That's what <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you ever get a chance, anyone gets a chance to go to New Zealand. It's just a beautiful place. The people are beautiful and, and so friendly, welcoming, and, and you'll never forget it. And plus, when the hell are you ever going to go to New Zealand? Yeah. Yeah. It's literally yeah. like a 23, 24 hour flight. Depending yeah. on the layovers. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know if I'd survive the flight. <laughs> it's, it's hard, man. It's very hard. Jose, it's you've hard. you've you got a couple of guys that are gunning for their pro cards. You got me who just got his pro card. You got Mike who's been competing in a few years, but still on the younger, younger side of his pro career. What would you tell a younger you? now looking looking back down who's eager to to get into the competitive ranks me tell yeah. me yeah what would you tell yourself a younger you nothing because i did it exactly the way i would have wanted to you know uh particularly with the supplementation side of it you know i was 34 years old before i even tried anything yeah you got your power naturally right yeah. yeah yeah i remember that holy you shit know, that's unheard of nowadays that's something I, I, I teeter back and forth with. Like, you know, I could have been a freak in my, in my early tw mid twenties, you know? Yeah. If you'd started earlier, but I'm like, you know what, had I done that, I wouldn't have learned the discipline. I wouldn't have learned how my nutrition and how to diet properly and how to train properly mm -hmm. and, and how to do things the right way. And I may have, you know, went way off track yeah was he tito said, natty the whole time yeah tito never did a thing okay to death. so and that's probably that's why too that you were went that route yeah 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 and, and that was something i struggled with you know um again by the time i'm 34 years old i can make my own decisions of course i'm a man and they're educated decisions and i learned as much about it as i possibly could before I decided to, to go that way. You sound like yeah. you're telling Tito right now. <laughs> <laughs> he, long he would see me 
and he'd get scared for me. He'd be like, oh, my God. Like, you had, freak. Yeah, I went from – so so I went from 184. I was doing the New York Pro. And then three months later, I was 201 Ooh. at the Atlantic City Pro. Three months? Stage three weight. Months. Holy shit. Stage weight. Yeah. A stage weight. It's almost 20 pounds of stage weight in three months. Right. That's, that's what that's what that's what they say when you've built the foundation like so much naturally that like you know once you interject something into it, you know just all you're clicked. running on all cylinders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't start till I was twenty eight. But you know, guys, guys starting with that shit, it's just not the same. You don't learn your body as much. You don't understand the concepts of training, nutrition, because you come reliant on it. Yeah. Then exactly. you come reliant on it, then you come off of it, and it's just like a a, a falling, you know disaster because you you just lean on it too much yeah instead of implementing it you lean on it and that's not you know the right right idea right. the way it. i look at it is is training is first yeah yes. nutrition is second and in the supplementation is last it, it is yeah and and everyone on the forums and idiots want to say oh yeah sure sure look at that but no yeah, yeah. But these are these are people that are like they don't have any credibility they don't like they're probably maybe people who haven't even done shows before that are just running their mouth, so they don't really have, yeah. you know, a good, proper, like, scientific approach to it. How old were you when you started, Nate? Um, I'm, assuming, yeah. I'm assuming you're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just in the last couple of years. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's why he went. Man, I, I'm, like, ready to flash back to that picture we just saw. <laughs> Holy shit. Man, you're like a spring chicken in, in that in that regard. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, Nate, what made you wait then? Um, I just wasn't into this stuff for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I shouldn't say I wasn't into it. I was into other things, right? Yeah. I, I competed you were making business. money. He was making yeah. money. <laughs> right. Yeah, so I, I just, you know, it, it made sense um, when I was looking to compete these last couple of years, and, and I sought out Jose, and uh, – you know, initially I just wanted, I only did the first show because my girlfriend was doing a show and she's the one that pulled me into it. She's like, I'm doing the show. We live together. You can either do the diet with me or not, but I would prefer it if you did, I wasn't going to come back. So I did that show just to like, I'll do it, but this is probably going to be a one-off. Mm -hmm. and, and then I win classic physique and I take second place in, in light heavies. And I'm going, Oh shit. Like I didn't, I was shocked. I didn't think I would, I would do that well. You know, Jose had told me when we were uh, talking about it, he's like, I, I don't even think I can make top five in a show. And he's like, no, 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 you can win. And I looked at him like, I just, just, you know, feeding me lip service. So after that. Of these shows, by the way, I didn't judge the one he won, but um, and, and this, this is a funny story. We'll go. The so I, do, I, I judge all the New England shows. I'm not the head judge. Weinberger is usually the head judge. And, um, but when he, won the cutler which is our biggest show uh he won the light heavies and then it was a uh, him it came down to him in the heavyweight who was much thinner than nate he was probably 5 11 you know real tall thin but completely shredded out of his mind and i was just like i go now if i vote for nate it's gonna look like <laughs> i voted for my client <laughs> so Sure as shit, it was so close. I vote for the other guy. He wins. And I have to tell Nate, I'm like, and I look at the head judge. I go, you know, I voted for that guy. He goes, I know you did. Uh, <laughs> I go up to Nate afterwards, and I'm like, it's so close. Jose is like the deciding vote for yeah. me. Like, oh, that, and, and I tell Nate, I'm like, I couldn't vote for you. I just couldn't, you know. Morally. Uh, my, my judging integrity is on the line. Like, yeah. And I don't want... And plus, you know, who cares? Everyone saw how good he looked. Yeah. And this show isn't going to make or break where he's going. So let's make you, like, completely bananas where it doesn't come down to my vote or anyone's vote. Yeah. You win handily, you know? So, and I so know what Nate, you mean. John you told me that, that um, he they asked him if he wanted to judge in Dominican, and he told them no. And he wasn't even, like, coaching me at the time, but he had been coaching me, like, for a couple years before that. Yeah. And he said it just wouldn't look good because we have yeah. so many pictures together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I never – I mean, because I work with so many people and, you know, they want to compete locally, um, I guess you're not supposed to or, or there, there is no law or rule no. 
Yeah. Um, Unwritten rule, I guess. Yeah, but you know what? I, I am such a stickler, and I tell all my clients, like, dude, I'm not going to ever vote for you if it's close or if you don't deserve it. So to me, it's simple. Like, yeah. because I'm a bodybuilder, and I hated getting screwed over. Yes. I hated not placing. So I don't. I don't screw people over. I, yeah. I think if you look the part, you know, for me, it's more important to do the right thing for the sport than yes. just some fucking client that you, you know. Come on, what, what, if they're good enough, they're gonna win shows. I think you Jose know? would make the best Olympia announcer. He would be the best, like yeah, raw, transparent. Yeah, you raw, transparent, but not like. Everybody's hating on Sean Ray right now because of the way that he says the things that he says. But some of the things he says he are true. Unnecessary things. Yeah, he yeah. Does, he does, he does. And he, he says does. them over and over right. unnecessarily. I'm doing a live broadcast and he says, yo, well, you know, Akeem Williams here has really bad gyno. And, uh, yeah, yeah. That was, that's exactly what I was yeah. going to mention. Even look. Yeah. And then he, he mentioned me, Jose Ramey. I don't think he's really taking it seriously anymore. He's having relationship issues and, and <laughs> oh my God. God. yeah like what is that is it, yeah anything to get under your skin they need to get rid of this guy yeah i think if uh, enough of us talk enough they'll, they'll have it, to get rid it's of it's really him. unfortunate because he's a good looking guy he's very well spoken his physique was really respected within the sport yes but he's just stepped on his prick too many times yeah. to, to to be this guy like like i he, wish he was nicer instead of backtracking and try to make things right he he, he adds more to it he's like yeah you, i don't care you know i'm not r- wrong you guys are wrong like there's no know. humility to him at all it doesn't yeah, seem so definitely. anyway Jose, yeah. a question for you i made a question for all you guys as we're kind of talking about this of the the sean ray era of people that have been um recently coming out on social media with these interviews like the value team right yeah 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 Korean. They're all shitting on the current crop of guys, right? Hence the the Brandon Curry wouldn't have placed top six. Um, Jose, you're obviously you're still uh, uh, a relatively current competitor, but you're still from kind of that era from as well. That era. Yeah. I won nationals in 2001. I yeah. won the USA's in 2000. So oh, why do you sure. think it is? Are these guys just removed from the sport and kind of bitter that they don't seem as relevant? Why, or do you think they're justified in, in on the current crop of guys? So they're a hundred percent right, but it's unnecessary to do Shit it. on them. You know, a classy guy says nothing. A classy guy will say, "Congrat." You wouldn't hear Lee Haney say any of this stuff. Lee yeah, Haney yeah. would say, "You know, congratulations to that young man." He deserves his day in the sun, you know. That's um, right. You know. Do you think and, guys are just doing too much peak week or day before the show, night before the show? I think it runs deeper, brother. With before it that, is, I mean. does run deeper. The, the the genetic pool is depleted because of all the different divisions. You know, you have men's physique, classic physique. You know, some guys that could have been an unbelievable open pro, maybe completely took a left turn and went to classic or, or, or men's physique. Yeah. But we'll never know because it, it is what it is. Bodybuilding is killing itself. The, the powers that be are the reason for what's happening today. It's not the athlete. There's great genetics out there everywhere. So you yeah, think it's just watered down? It's money, man. Yeah. So it's just watered down. So well, with, more think, divi- with more change. divisions, you attract more people, which – you know, is in turn great for the federation, but not so much for the quality, uh, you know, and the athlete. But then again, the athlete does have the decision to primarily choose and, you know, stick to that one category. Like I started with bodybuilding. People said, have you considered like, no, this is my thing. This is what I do. If I fail when I'm trying my best, it is what it is. This is what I have my heart stuck to. And I feel like some guys, not everybody, they might use the other categories as a as a fall safe. Like, okay, my legs suck. We'll throw board short, uh, board shorts on, and I'll do physique. Here's no a- disrespect to the physique guys; they work hard. But again, it's just different than it was back. Here's you know, a back question, in the Jose. Um, the, the classes tend to have like a different look, and that's kind of how they divide the classes. Do you think someone coming up like Keon Pearson? could change the look of the 212 or will it just be dominated by someone like George the Bull coming up from classic who they've always said belonged more as a 212 guy 
No, I think whoever's the best is going to win. There is no look. I won shows, Flex won shows with two totally different looks. Sean Clarita won shows. There's two totally differently. You know, it's whoever's the best on that day, Mm -hmm. you know, is going to win. And I I think guys like Keon can do awesome. Uh, And George. Both great physiques. Yeah, great physiques, but very different. I don't think there's a look for the division, you know. Uh, For 212 or for classic? For 212. Yeah. Well, I mean, even classic, you have very different. You have um, uh, Bumstead, who's, uh, uh, you know, taller, longer leg, longer yes. arms. Looks like a bodybuilder pretty Looks much. Looks awesome in a front yeah. lat spread. Not big so vacuum. Much, you know, yeah. It's certain shots, he's not that great. Rear double. Um, and then Brian, who's a shorter, more compact. Um, yes, more muscle. But, you know, on that day, they went with, with Bumstead, but um, you know, Brian was arguably his best ever. So I think Brian has a nineties look to him too. Yeah, a little more density. Yeah. What yeah. I was gonna uh, um, hit upon was, you know, we, we live in a now society. Everyone wants it now. And those guys back then didn't have the choice. So they had to put in the years in years. Nobody wants to train 10, 11, 12 years before they're able to reach that peak physique yes yeah i gotta wait 12 years before i can win a night of champions or a new york pro you know hell no where they could win the men's physique next year or two years from now and win classic two three or four years from now you know you bumstead is only 26 or something yeah yeah you know that would be a rarity you you know uh, guys winning at that level um, and, and that's the difference between the, you know, the LeBron, Flex, Cormier, that era, Ronnie Coleman, that era knew and understood they had to put in many years of training before they were going to become anything. You know, they oftentimes would do nationals two, three, four times in a row before they'd win. And yeah. every year, you know who it was. It was going to be Flex. It was going to be Cormier. It was going to be LeBron. It was going to be DeMeo. And all those names. Now, you don't know who – five names from the Nationals. Yeah, different you every know? year. Yeah, because it's all spread out. And there's – no one's able to develop a name as an amateur like years ago. So yeah. what do you think the biggest difference between then and now would be? Like, what would what, – why, why do you think that is – why do you think that's the case? More shows. I just said it because there's too many divisions. You think you think there should only you think that they should not have have as many? No, no, I think that life transition yeah, things it changes, change, evolving. You know it, exactly. It has evolved into the point where we have so many different divisions, where something's got to give. And and but I, but I I get what you're saying though. It's kind of watered down because where we have like. Are Quentin Uera Uera in open? You know, there there's a guy who's in classic who like Ricky Moten, who would have been an amazing open bodybuilder. Yeah. But but right now they're sticking to that weight limit in classic. So I, I totally get what you're saying. We don't really know what the open class would look like right now if there wasn't a men's physique. How about this? Imagine if Bonac stayed at two twelve. Cool. Yeah. Because yeah. he was. <laughs> He was a 212 for us. Yeah. I could beat him against yeah. him a couple of times. I beat him every time. Holding himself back, right? And now he's twice the size of me, you know? Yeah. He was holding himself back. Flex is holding himself back. Hottie was holding himself back. How many more years do you think Flex got in him? He's only – he's, he's – shit, let's see, 36. I'd say – Another 10 years. No. Watch, I, I don't think he will, man. I don't think I don't he's think, training, like, as hard as he was back in the day. I don't think No, he I think he's to. training plenty hard. I yeah? Think, yeah, absolutely. I you figured, know, like, he, after you put on all the size, you know, you can kind of, like, prevent injury a little more. But, dude, he's still, remember, he's stepping into a whole new ocean. Yeah, You know, going true. from 212 to open is, like – Yeah, his mindset's probably not I see, yeah, preventing I see injury. pictures of him training – uh, with with uh, Raphael, yeah, and Raphael is a big dude. And yeah, he, he looks beautiful, but dude, Flex makes him look like a tall, skinny guy. 
Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's true. Flex is humongous, right? He's now. just yeah, so he's dense. dense. I know. Dense, I had yeah. I had the privilege of having dinner with them after John won Toronto. We all had dinner for John's birthday, yeah. and I, I sat beside Flex, and it was just like, holy fucking shit, man! You would never think this guy could make a two twelve weight. Like how? Yeah. There must be a magic wand. <laughs> They but not only over his head. but he was he, he gets way under 212. That's crazy. The last show when he won, he was 209. That's oh my crazy. goodness. Yeah. When he won last year's uh But he looks full at 209. Like you never would have guessed look at him. This guy's crazy full. Yeah. 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 Crazy He's got bird bones. How so <laughs> imagine, yeah. imagine what he's gonna look like at 220, 220. That's what I was just gonna ask you. Yeah. How yeah. big do you think he has to be to win the open? To beat it like a Bonac or a 218. That's it. Yeah. I mean, there's gonna be rumors. Oh, he's 230. I know his physique. I know what he weighs. I weighed in with him year after year after year. And he was always the same as I was, same weight as me. And I know that he looks unfucking real at that weight. So I can't picture putting on 25 pounds or something. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He puts on 10 to, you know, 10, 12, 11, 9, 8 pounds, whatever. If he puts on that amount of weight and it's all quality, then he's going to look 240. But you know what's funny? You see guys in the Olympia who play small this year, they're all guys that are have been lighter and they're lower on the scale, like Bonac, like yeah. Hottie. These guys are in the two, 220s. Right, they're not like yeah, the two yeah. eight, the, the two eighty and the two ninety phase, like the Rami. They I feel like not, they didn't play so well last year, and uh, not good in shape. Yeah, yeah those exactly. guys always have trouble with conditioning. That's one yeah, thing like when, you see, as well. when you see Hadi and and Bonac in person, they're completely different level than everyone in the show. Yeah, yeah. 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 Same thing with Flex, like. They're different level. The separation in the muscle. They're like the maturity. The fullness, the hardness. Yeah, the maturity, yeah. absolutely. And it just stands out. And that's what makes Bonac stand out from everyone. He's got kind of a funky frame, like a short torso. Long yeah. hips come up real high. Um, you know, some of the posing is a little funky. But he's so light years ahead of everyone else with density and separation that you just can't take your eyes off. And it's a, the same yeah. thing. And that's what is going to be Flex's calling card. I'm, are, I'm calling gonna, right now. He's going to be first call out, no question. I know. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, are you going to be there? Sure, I feel like you're going to be front row. And if, if Phil's not there, if Sean's not there, then Flex can win without are, question. Are you going to go? Uh, yeah, I don't know what my plans are right now. Maybe, yeah, I'd love to, you know. Um, who the hell knows? Yeah. So yeah. top so top three prediction. Top three prediction of what you think is gonna happen at this year's in the open. Based based off of, you know, obviously certain factors of how the quarantine Yeah, you know, we're we're gonna force you. You're gonna have to do open two twelve because you're a two twelve legend. We, we wanna and hear classic because I'm a classic guy and you we guys. wanna hear along with the people what you guys what, what both you guys think, I guess. Like predictions we'll let nate go first because he's been giving jose the mic a little bit i know that's probably right, tough it, <laughs> well, i guess we we have to uh we have to guess on uh, our phil and, and sean doing it right i'm gonna say no yeah I, I i just have a feeling phil's probably not doing it and sean yeah, probably not. he'll do it if they'll let him do it but the last i heard is he hasn't um applied for his his pro card again so it's I my guess would be the show would let them. It's will the IFBB, but is all that stuff all the legal work? Isn't that more so what the IFBB is waiting for for that to be in the clear for them to allow him to apply again? Yeah, and and I don't right. know anybody. I don't that, know how this guy got himself in this situation in the first place. So yeah. so basing it's, it off the sad. fact that that Sean and and Phil are both not going to be. Yeah, doing so if it. they're not there, man. You know, having seen, I was there Jose's last Olympia and saw Flex, you know, arguably at his best. My vote would probably be for for Flex. You know, we'll, we don't know what Brandon's looking like. We have um, Abdullah uh, on our podcast where we're taping this week. Brandon Curry's nice. Coach. So we got a big brain there. Yeah. Um, that's going to be, you know, he wasn't at his best at the Olympia. I think he looked better at the Arnold uh, the year that he won. So, man, I'd love Flex to take it. You know, will Hadi be able to compete? I don't know. I, you know, you had the, the initial Iran travel ban. Now we've got the travel ban. 
due to uh, the yeah, pandemic, COVID, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't, think, I don't think he's coming over. Yeah, so, that's true. You know, if, if you're looking at the lineup, you're you're talking Brandon Curry, you're talking Bonac, and Flex has to be yeah. in the mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I know, agree. certainly somebody can can jump up, but I don't think a Kuklo is going to be. In That's that. a tight top three, you know. I, yeah. It's going to be hard to so see. So if right I now. had to just put money on somebody from that mix, I might put it on Flex. I think he's, you know, he's he has to come in at somewhat of an underdog because he hasn't been seen in that lineup. But I would I would go with him. Um, Two twelve wise, uh, man. I'd love to see Derek win. Yeah, I just don't. Why was he so soft soft last year? He he didn't come in. He didn't come in how he should the last time around. And And I I think that he wants redemption. With that is, like, we can probably all look at it and say, "Man, he doesn't look how he looked a week out, a month out." Yeah, that's right. Right the 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 gym in Florida that he's at. Um, But there's no word from him. Like he's we're certainly criticized after the Olympia. We're like, what happened? Right. People, yeah. that was the interview started off with him. What happened? And he's just like, what are you talking about? I looked great. I should have won that show. I nailed my conditioning. Yeah. Right. So that's the part that throws me off is how are you not saying like, let me explain what backfired. We overcarbed. We got this wrong. None of that. Maybe it's a strategy that he has, but if you're not admitting that something was off, then how are you going back to the drawing board to make sure yeah. it doesn't happen again? So, mm-hmm. so he actually came out and said he, he should have won that show? In so many words, yeah. He, he, wow, okay. All the interviews, he was Ron Harris and a few other people. They started it out like, hey, what happened with you? And he's like, what are you talking about? What okay. Wow. He was super defensive. Super defensive. And he's like, look, friends of mine are telling me they had me winning. Like that was the angle he was coming. My mom at. says okay. I'm in the back. My mom. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, Kamal has to certainly be a favorite, right? He won't be the biggest guy on stage, but you know he's going to be the most complete, most shredded guy. Yeah. Uh, who else? Who else is in the mix? Obviously, Derek's there. Kamal's an older guy too, right? Yeah. I don't know how many more he has, but he's coming back for this one. So my money would be on him. He looked fresh, man. He looked young. Like, I wouldn't be able to. He's like a Dexter Jackson. I wouldn't be able to tell he's, like, almost fucking 50. Yeah. yeah. He was shredded, man. The conditioner was there. He still had a great physique. And if Derek was shredded, he obviously, in my opinion, I think he would have won. But if he doesn't come in tight, man, he knows he's facing another possible second place uh, for this upcoming year. So, yeah. Okay, classic. The year before, like, when Jose stood next to him and, you know, uh, I disagreed with the judging, but he placed ahead of Jose uh, in, in 18. The criticism was he wasn't shredded enough. Like he was off then. And everybody said, if he can nail the conditioning with his frame, the silhouette of him is bananas. Um, they had said in 18, if he can nail the conditioning, he's got 19. He's going to win. Yeah. And he was the if. other direction. Way off. Yeah, the if, right? Yeah. It starts to become that conversation you have with uh, – uh, Roly, Big uh, Rami, same shit. Uh, right? uh, Lionel Bayaki, all these people. Yeah. Oh man, Bayaki, man! I used to like love his physique. It's like fuck, what? Like just take the food away from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Put the fork down. Now yeah. nah, he's great. All right, classic. What do you got, Nate? Classic. I, I think um, I think they're gonna give it to Bumstead. I feel like uh, last year both Brion and. and Bumstead were probably at their best. Brion wasn't off, right? And that was a shock to me. I, I, if I would have put money watching the show, I would have said Brion wins it because he's the champ and he wasn't off. So when does that happen? When does the champ get – like, certainly the champ gets dethroned if they're really off, but Brion looked awesome. So to me, that kind of sent the message of – uh, Bumstead just hadn't nailed it before, and they were waiting for him to nail it. That's right, and he said that so, in an interview. Steve, yeah, said that in Steve an said that. So yeah. that tells me that that's the look that yeah. they want. Certainly, he has to he has to look as good, if not better. He can't come in off. But I think if he uh, makes any improvements from last year, I think they give it to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we just said it again too. The look, like I guess, so classic does have a look. We could all agree. Yeah. yeah. I mean, every show is different. You have different looking winners, but for the Olympia, that's the look they want. Yeah. 
because there was absolutely nothing wrong with Brian. He was his best ever. Yet yeah. they went with Bumstead because that's the look that they want. You know, you can't yeah. argue with it. Really. Yeah, no, yeah. And now, and now, and now, and now, uh, Brian's gonna have to be Chris. Chris doesn't have to be Brian. Yeah. So yeah. it's even tougher. Because that's the look that they have now. That's the current look. So it's going to be interesting too to see when the lineup changes. Because um, when the top five is like four guys or three or four guys that all look like Breon, and then you have Chris. Chris stands out like he a stands out thumb, absolutely. Right? He's taller. He's got a pretty oh, yeah. look. Uh, so you know, the big back, head forward. of hair. Yeah, so, so with a couple of those top five, top six guys gone. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see who shifts into that place. If if we can have a tall white guy shift into that place, we might see an, an interesting Olympia. You know, we might see a different battle than the one everybody's expecting. Because I always think it, it's they're judging what they see. They're judging who's up there, you know. Who's but in that dude, call out? Changing you know what? Everything. The, Jay, I think the biggest thing with Chris is, like, God willing, he comes in with the good conditioning because he's got that autoimmune issue. And that makes – that's kind of out of his hand, seeing how he's going to respond to the supplements and the food. With the autoimmune problem, everything's kind of up in the air. It's, you know, it could differ day to day. So, um, God well, willing, it, it could works. be It could be said that he wasn't really dry at the Olympia, that there was – that you could tell that there was, like, a, a little bit of a water issue. But I think if Brian brings in – a nice handlebar mustache. With- <laughs> I've been saying that. What I've been hair, saying that. Brian will win. With yeah, the- or, or the afro with the with the like yeah, the pick yeah. in it or something. Yeah, like, do bring, it real, <laughs> yeah. bring it back to the the eighties, seventies, eighties. Jose, yeah. who do you think, or maybe for you guys as well? So you obviously you lose Keon, you lose you lose George Peterson, right? Which uh, both of them arguably could have been the future of the division. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Although George George looked his best and it wasn't good enough and he's still third, so I um, Keon probably still had a, a a lot of potential to move up and, and really okay. challenge. So who do we have left? Obviously Santi's out as well. Steve we interviewed Morris. him last week. He's up to two twelve. Um, we've got oh, a local guy. Now. Santi's moved up. Yeah, out of class. Yeah, okay. He's, and so he was uh, six at the Arnold, right? So he was somebody that you at least had to talk yeah. about for top five. Um, you have Abner, who's who's a Boston guy, and our Abner Logan. Um, he was, I think, fifth at the Arnold, right? So he's got to be in the mix. Yeah, so we've got Ricky Moten. Yep. yep. Ricky, I, I think Ricky, well, I mentioned him before. I think he's got a great physique, just real dense, that, like, hard, like, kind of, like, bodybuilder, been training a long time, muscle. Um, Brandon, you mentioned as well. Um, Steve? Yeah, Steve yeah, Lorius. And and that's oh, yeah. another Felix, one, just Felix? crazy shape. Uh, Felix, who won the Arnold, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Wesley Visor, he's got um, he's qualified as well, isn't he? From from winning show earlier in the year. So I don't know. It should be interesting. Open. It's going to be up in the air. I feel like, especially yeah, I, it's going especially because George and Keon are gone. Yeah, there's, a, there's another short guy that, that's similar to um, Pearson, the guy who won Toronto. No, uh, you're talking about Courage, oh, Courage Apora. Yeah, 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 he's crazy, man. Yeah, Big legs. Awesome. Yeah, I think if he was like just a little bit more conditioned, yeah, and he would be definitely someone like really That's tough to beat. Yeah, I follow him. He's There's really a lot of guys that can fill in those spots. Yeah, but yeah, it's I f- a matter of nailing it. Yeah, I feel yeah, like I feel like it's not cemented. That that you know that yeah. um, category is not cemented yet. So a lot of I feel like the places could go up in the air any which yeah. way. And this is why I mentioned that like it depends who's in that call out, right? Like if we get another call out where it's like another five guys and four of them are short black guys with vacuums, and then you got Chris again, the yeah, tallest yeah, yeah. guy, just True. standing there looking like Christopher Reeves with his fucking Superman <laughs> cape. It's going to be a hands down, right? And it's nothing to do with black or white. It's just when you're looking at the lineup, who stands out the most is going to stand out to you. And if they look the best, they're, they're going to win. Yeah. In my opinion. Anyway. Yeah. 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 Should. Nate, I didn't realize all these guys from Class A, the 1 to 212, like that's going to now be a much thicker, steeper lineup. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sounds really interesting now. Right? George Peterson, the guy's got a lot of muscles, cr- cross everywhere. 
He was a 212 before Classic, too, wasn't he? Yeah, so he's just going back, I think. But oh, he no. wasn't well, as now. He, he was a heavyweight bodybuilder. Uh, okay. And yeah, then yeah. he sucked down for Classic and won Nationals. So he stayed with Classic. And now he's just outgrowing it. And, and you know, he's making the right choice because they Absolutely. were not. He's thinking, huge. As Nate said, he could not be any better. Yeah. And he reached his ceiling of what he could accomplish in that class. And now I think he's got a great chance to go in and win. That pick you brought up with me with George, you know, I, I, uh, I was getting ready, I want to say, for Costa Rica when he was uh, – I ran into him at Bev's, talked to him for like 20 minutes, stood next to him, took that picture. Um, we were like the same weight in that photo. And you Holy look how much Holy bigger. Me. So I was probably – um, at most 215, I might have been 212, 213, somewhere in that range. I asked him what he weighed because he was thick, right? And you can tell him standing next to me. I, I look I look like a, a twig. And he was like 215 in that pick. Yeah. Holy. Right? His, look his back is Holy just shit. crazy. Too. He's out angling you a little bit, though, Nate. <laughs> yeah. He knows right? how to do it. <laughs> I think now he's, he's got the lean in. He's grown like that was just after the show where he was starting to just rebound and move up. And and uh, I don't know that he had put on much new mass at that point. I think he was just filled out. Uh, you see picks now. I think he's up into the like 230. 230. Yeah, yeah, right. 230 and shredded still. Yeah. Holy shit. He's That's going to be exciting to see. Yeah. Like, let's spy on him. Know. Let's spy on him. Let's see what he's up to. Yeah, him and holy Keon shit. Yeah, Keon's yeah, yeah. looking absolutely massive. Yeah, like, Keon yeah, looks massive, crazy. but Keon doesn't look like his shape has changed one bit. That's what I mean. The stomach Keon is still don't there. Have and... this kind of muscle. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. No, not yeah. yet. But he's also younger, isn't he? Like, yeah, he's yeah, yeah, way younger. Yeah, he was, exactly. He and he's new. This is a year, year and a half ago. Yeah, this is his first year on gear. Yeah. They posted a, a back double of uh, of Keon, and the waist is like same size, but the density and the look fullness that, is though. just yeah. But come yeah, on, like, look at that! Like he's ready for the open. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, the fact nuts. that he did classic physique surprises me. Yeah, George. Well, George has told stories about him having to make weight, and it's like a week of no carbs, no no protein. No, you gotta carbs, cut a leg no off water. or something. Yeah, yeah. Jose, you know how tall he is. He's pretty he's tall. Like he's eight. like five eight. Yeah, that's gonna be a pretty tall two twelve. Ah, I guess like uh, I guess that's pretty average. No, for two twelve, little. It's no, that's taller tall. than usual. That's, that's very taller. tall. He's yeah, gonna be yeah, a taller two twelve guy, but you know because of his muscularity and, and smaller joints. Yeah. He's not gonna be like he's not gonna look thin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, which is what I was when he was competing in classic. I would always say, yeah, he would look a little thin next to some of the 212 guys. Right. But not after seeing this. I seen some pictures of him at 230, and I'm like, he's going to be dangerous. I think he's going to destroy Derek, to be honest. Well, his condition will I don't know. be better. The thing with Derek is he's got like a very refined, polished physique. Yeah. I think I, this, became, this could come in. It's, it's like a nice sight to the eye. You can see the fullness, the tight waist, the nice vacuum, flared laps. Full yeah, arm, Derek's like, got a great back, too. You know, everything is just kind of in place other than the conditioning. I think Derek has that great mix between the size and, and like the presentation balance, kind of like what Keon's going to bring and what George has. Like if Keon and George fused into one guy, I think they would kind of be Derek if Derek could come in shape. And I don't mean like come in shape because I've never been there live to see. But everybody knows this picture that he always posts from this gym. He always looks shredded. And then when is that MI is that MI forty? Yeah, he's yeah. training with them. Yeah, he's in shape. He's just it's not a mature physique yet. Yeah, because it looked a little up. soft. Yeah, has there been you still think he needs a, You still think he needs that? a couple more years? I think he'll be better this year. He'll either be better and win, or they're gonna push him way back and say, yeah. you're done. Smart the fuck up kind of thing. Jose, has there been a show, you know, you, since you followed him, where he's nailed his conditioning? Was it like when he turned pro or like the, I think he did a pro show like a week later, right? And won it. Oh, right what now. about Alex? We totally no, forgot about I Alex too. I didn't have him winning that show. Okay. So he all, he hasn't nailed his conditioning yet, period. No. I mean, for him, he did. But, 
No, from what you'd like to see from him? No. It's so weird because a month out of the Olympia, he was doing a guest pose and he looked like glutes are in and he looked sick. Like yeah. you'd look and say, this guy's right on track to win the Olympia. You know, there's no yeah. reason to say otherwise. Until you put him on stage with yeah. Olympia conditioning. True, you know, and perhaps the dial in didn't go well for him. There's a, Kamal a, a variable. just took your eyes off him. You kept yeah. looking at Kamal. You couldn't, you know, and, um, you know, a lot of people didn't know much about Kam Kamal, but Kamal's like a five time world champion. You know how hard it is to win the world champions? He wow. won it five times. He won Arnold Amateur overall. He won the Asian Championships. I mean, he's one of the winningest bodybuilders in history. We didn't even yeah. mention Sean. Clarita. Oh, yeah. Sean's nasty. Sean, Condition, he's the conditioning king. Sean well, last could year. have been top two last year. You know, he could easily, easily have had that. Yeah, actually, I agree. I agree. The conditioning was just too hard to ignore. He was uh, full and, 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 and hard, you know. But I feel like maybe the height, and he wasn't as long as, and, you know, wide as Eric, uh, Derek. Yeah. So. Well, no one is. A couple variables. That, this is true. This I think true. Derek, Derek versus George is going to be a good one. Yeah, like look at Derek... that. The, the pick that you just had up there of the three of them. Yeah. Right, of, of – Derek's midsection, right? Yeah. Compared to two guys that are in condition. Yeah. Um, man, what a difference in that pick. And that's the thing, too. I remember Flex Wheeler said it once. Um, when you're in shape, any angle, any camera, it won't matter. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I, like, I just say that because I heard in it. that photo. There's not one striation. Yeah. Where Clarita's quads are strided up and down, his pecs, his abs. And they're all being shot in the same light and the same angle, right? Right. right. But, yeah, but Jose, like I, like I said for myself, I noticed that in some situations, even though you might be better in condition, if the guy beside you is fuller, not as good condition, I'd probably give it to him, and I feel like that's what happened in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's a, certainly a lot prettier than Clarita. And he's <laughs> taller and takes up less space. Yes. You know? yes. Yeah, I'm not like set on one way or another, but I could very easily have been okay with Clarita beating him last year. Yeah, there's yeah. A lot of, there's a lot you of would factors understand that I guess sure. go into yeah. it. Hey, who's that guy? That's a good looking dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's done. I still had some legs there. Yeah. So, Kamal, like I said about Derek, he's either going to win. Or be like third Push or fourth. Back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's not gonna be a second again. There's new blood in that in that uh, in that yeah, category now. So it's like, yeah, there's too much. Like it's either you smart enough or you're getting pushed back because mm -hmm. you know George's condition is gonna be on. Uh, I can't see Keon coming in. I mean you never really know, but based on his past, he well, was coming in on point. One thing that I want to ask, like we, Santi mentioned it in in your guys' interview, and he kind of alluded to it in a way. He said that basically, like he was doing classic, and he preferred it in a way sometimes because he didn't have to do as much gear. Do you think these guys are doing any less gear than these guys in the open? Classic cool. guys, like uh, yeah, some beyond, of them. Yeah, you, sure. Some of them are doing more. Yeah, that's that's what I think too. I wouldn't yeah. really say going f just because you're going to classic that you're not going to have to run as much shit as you would for two twelve. But well, I, I bet George was doing very little, and now he's not doing quite as little. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I would agree with that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> quite in as little. Auntie's case, right where we had to get to struggle just to make weight it didn't make sense to add more, right? Because right. you have to struggle yeah. that much more. So yeah. he would say, like, in his break, his off season, he had to cap his weight. He could only get up to a certain point because even that point was going to be a struggle to get back down for that classic physique weight. Yeah. So is would you say that, like, in a situation like that, is there just some, some anabolics you would just stay away from or you just watch the weight, watch the water, watch the weight? Like, say, for for example, like, you have to weigh in. Nate, what do you weigh in at? You said 185 or 192? 198. 198. Yeah. So, like, with your weight 
at where it's at now, would you just say like, okay, I, when I start my prep, I'm definitely not doing more than like 500 mil tests just because he's I not, know my he's, weight. He's not going to weigh in at 198 ever again. Oh, yeah, yeah so you're doing we're asking the wrong guy. Yeah. For some reason, like that was, I was going to be in classic, right? And that was forever my weight. Um, that stuff would have to come into play. You, you, yeah, yeah. More because not that more always means more muscle, but it doesn't more mean water. Less, yeah. You know, it could mean more water, more other things, but it, it certainly complicates things more. Um, if you're worried about making weight, you can't uh, you, stay away from a lot of the water. Five holders. pounds of new muscle. You know, if you're just barely yeah. making weight like Santi was. Yeah. Let's okay. say, let's say, um, you know, a 16 week prep for a show. And you're already close in weight. Say you're you're the beginning. Your first six weeks starts off with anadrol every day. There'd be no need for that. Yeah. If you, if you yeah. can't afford to put on any size. So yeah. It'd be that, counterproductive, right? Right. Yeah. You just might not even need to do that because you have mm -hmm. enough muscle. You just need to get in shape. Yeah. So you know that that that's kind of a good thing. Yeah. What do you think the sweet spot? Easier, would be? easier on your liver, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. What do you think the sweet spot would be in terms of the length of a prep you would have a client do? Would that depend from client to client, or would it? Would, like, what? What would you say is the for ideal gear length? for the diet? Sorry, for gear or for you the just diet? Just, in just the entire the entire prep length, like prepping for a competition. I like a sixteen week prep, unless they're someone who tends to be fatter. You know, um, someone like Nate, we could do it in eight weeks. You know, because he, he's always lean. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to say. So I shouldn't tell you I want to do Tampa in seven weeks. <laughs> no, well, you're, you're in good shape. You're not lean like Nate. Like, Nate has striated glutes oh, pretty shit. much all year. That's crazy. Holy yeah. Shit. He's We're got eight nice. legs. We just ask him to check him every time I we come into workout. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's try glutes. Because <laughs> he hasn't seen him in a while, he wants to remember yeah. what they look like. <laughs> uh, this little film, he knows that he's been eating a little bit of shit, right? Yeah. No, no, he's 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 lean, lean, lean. Like he's probably since I've known him, he's never been over probably eight percent body fat or something. You know. Now, Nate, is that because of a genetic thing or is it because you're just always eating clean and you've always been an active guy? You got a good, you know, genetic, everything kind of in place. Yeah, I, I'm sure there's a genetic component. I, I've always been skinny. So when I when I came okay. into college, I was 136 pounds. Oh, shit. What? Yeah, wow. 136 really pounds, you know, 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, and so it's really hard for me to put on size. But Plenty of it was hair. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have <laughs> hair as, as a rocker. Um, but a lot of it is uh, I'm on my feet all day training people or going around. Right. Things. So like the last couple of preps, I was training five or six clients a day. And, and that's like on my feet moving around like, come on, let's go. We're going to superset. We're running back and forth around the gym. So and then I'm doing different high rises. I'm not stationed out of one gym. I'm going to a building down the street, one area and a building someplace else. So I'm moving around. Um, so that's a huge part of it is just that part alone. I'm burning so yeah, many calories. Tell them he doesn't like shit food. He doesn't eat good. Bad. Yeah. Good. It's I my it's my off season compared to pre contest is just more rice. More. more yeah. Rice, just more. Oh um, boy, perfect. It's good. And if I have any meals, like going out is like going to a nice steakhouse and getting a filet, you know, maybe there's some butter on the steak. I don't worry about. Maybe I guess Jose looks like a proud coach right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have Ben and Jerry's yeah. every night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time I asked Jose, I was like, "Can I have a cheat meal?" He wrote back one word, "No." <laughs> Simple. Well, you weren't ready for it. No, no, I wasn't. <laughs> if you don't ask, then you don't need it. Yeah, yeah. Your coach should be like, "Oh shit." You and need then, one. Then add one, yeah. Yeah. If your weight dropped significantly or you look flat or, or that's when it happens. But if you if you're asking, it's only because you want one. <laughs> yes. Because you need one. I had Nate. one time with Jose where uh I think it was for my, my first show and I just hit a wall. It was I, I pretty routinely for me, I don't know if you guys have the, the same uh same time period. Right about three weeks out is when I'm like, oh shit, we're in prep, yeah. right? Where I'm exhausted, just I yeah. have to walk around to these different buildings. And 
uh, I'm like, shit, okay, this is going to be a 15 minute walk. You've got this. Like, in, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and have yeah. to really time my carbs right. You know, whatever it is, I'm doing 120 grams of carbs. I have to have that pre workout carb meal to, to just be able to function. And I had come in to train with Jose one day. We we're doing back and I was out of it. Like, I just wasn't there. I had no strength, no, uh, no aggression, no anything. And my legs felt heavy just walking around and I'm not one to, to complain, go to Jose, like, Hey, what's wrong. And he's like, you feeling all right there, buddy. And I'm like, man, I'm really weak. And he <laughs> knows my physique. You know, I was super depleted at that point. He's like, all right, here's what you're going to do. You can get a burger and fries. Or if you and your girl want to go out to a dinner at a nice steakhouse, get a steak, get an order of fries. And you're going to feel like a million bucks tomorrow and you're going to look better. And I'll, you know, send me pictures. And the next day I woke up and I was like, I don't even feel like I'm in prep anymore. I felt like a million bucks. Yeah. That's when food feels like a vascular. Like as Jose had said, like, you know, when you needed a cheat meal, right? It it looked drastically different. It's not just mentally. I'd like to have a burger. Yeah. You have that burger or that steak and fries. You should look drastically different the next morning. Yeah. You got to fill the dry sponge. Yep. Exactly. Uh, Nate, do you guys have a Copacabana in Boston? Like a Brazilian steakhouse? Yeah, there's we have uh, there's one chain, uh, Jose. What's the uh, what's the chain that's in Boston? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bogo de Chao. Yep, yep. So that's our like chain. They're all over the uh, place. Yeah, um, we've got some some probably independent. Uh, the town of Everett, which is between Midwest the Grill, I live, is a big Brazilian community. Nice. There's those places around there, but where I live in downtown Boston, the Fogo de Chao is like the high end like you've got to pay 60 bucks then it's all all the steak you can eat yeah sweet so if i come down to boston nate you got to show me this place because i knew i I'm knew you were going there i'm like mike's <laughs> only asking about the food because he's going yeah i want to yeah, i want like to put that on the schedule and come down for that i think i'm um, gonna bring you for for food is uh <laughs> we brought jose so uh my girl that competes and has done really well um, she's also a musician. She went to Berkeley College of Music. So there's oh, a nice. chain called Mastros. Um, they're all around the U.S. They've got it like in Texas and in Beverly Hills. So high end steakhouse like a Del Frisco is a Capitol Grill, and she sings at it. So she's singing for the oh, night. Oh, cool. so Jose's come down. Jose gets smashed. Jose starts singing at the top of his lungs. He <laughs> <laughs> doesn't get thrown out is because he's with us, and also he's like 240 pounds. Otherwise, they'd be tossing his drunk ass out on the street. Oh man, I'm, I'm coming down for that. Oh, you love Absolutely. it. Absolutely, it's my favorite experience ever. Yeah, I want to come down for that. I think I think we should all roll down for that. That would be cool. What I would love to do is when the when the COVID is lifted, come down and watch the Leafs play the Bruins because that's probably <laughs> one of the biggest rivals. <laughs> and that's since like the Toronto, Toronto rivalry got going. Yeah, I feel like it's even better than uh, Toronto and the Habs, to be honest. Because uh-huh. Toronto can't beat the Bruins. I mean, I don't know if you guys follow hockey much, but uh, the Bruins have a one-up on a lot of teams, at least being the one of them. Yeah, you should do it. So, Come yeah. stay at the casino. Yeah, yeah. It'll be a so, you, so, Jose, are you far from, like, I guess, the city of Boston where, yeah, so uh, where Nate's he, at? He's smack dab in the middle. I'm, okay. you know, not quite a half hour north. We usually just meet somewhere in between to train which gym do you guys go to so we train at greater boston fitness in revere it's near the airport nate are um, you by a window yeah let's see your view i see jose's view he can tell he's out where he is hd cam bring it around here you can see oh, oh man nice. that's, that's beautiful so yeah it's, it's i'm 30, 38 floors up so Jose's wow, in the so jungle cool. and you're in the concrete jungle. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So sorry, Jose, I'm curious because I want to know. So yeah, you said you guys train near the airport of the Greater uh Greater Boston, Boston gym. Yep. And is that where you like you usually train even if you're not training with, with Nate? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It's one of so the few gym. dungeons left. Uh, uh it's a dinosaur. They got literally equipment older than I am in uh it's it's a beautiful atmosphere. It's, it's nice. hardcore. You know they got two hundred pound dumbbells and you know oh, perfect. It's very welcoming to bodybuilders and and you know that's where you go if you're in the area. Yeah. Now, now do you guys have access to to that gym now or like how have you been no. how have you been managing? No, we um 
we go to a private facility and um, it's in like an office building where there's, it was basically designed for like photo shoots for okay. this like marketing company. And, yeah. and, and we have friends that work for the company that allow us to go there. Nice. Um, you know, they got great stuff. I mean, they got a cable crossover machine, pull down seated row, dumbbells to 120, you know, like hack squat, squat like leg press. Nice. Wow. Yeah. So enough to have a good training session then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We so you guys feel like things haven't really changed then in terms of the, the progress that you've been making? or Just with the frequency of it is it's not as much as, as it was, you know. It was I would only average. Three days yeah. a week? I, would, I trained six days a week for forever. Yeah. Now I've been training two, maybe three times a week if I'm lucky. Is it just because limited access or just inconvenient? Yeah. And just, you know, yeah. It's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same. Because yeah. you're not competing for a show probably, so maybe you're a little more. It's, not, yeah, it's not a priority. In, in, in More time with the wife. Yeah, I got a lot of shit going on. So, so yeah. yeah. You know, I, I wish. Once things open back up and I'm in the gym every day physically training people, then I'll definitely train more. Do you usually train like one, well, like not right now, but when you're on your six day a week split, is it one body part per day or do you, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I, I never got into the whole, you know, Two that was something that me and Nate always kind of joke around about is you know, some of those training programs are like push pull and then they don't train arms. Yeah. And I was, you, know, yeah. you can point them out in a gym. You're like that guy's legs and ass are huge. <laughs> you no arms yeah you know? I, I was not a body on routine gonna ask you especially because um you really into the training and um push the importance of training what do you think about a lot of these guys that are um advocating for um seo oil in the arms <laughs> yeah like is is that like giving up like you, can you build arms no matter how shit your arms are? Or are these guys taking a, a shortcut that's not going to look the same? I don't think it looks the same. No, it doesn't look the same. No, it doesn't but, look the same for sure. But the, no, the, there's all, I know plenty of people. Like Ron Harris, you know the writer Ron Harris? Yeah. yeah. He's a Boston guy or a, a Massachusetts guy. and He's a great guy. I've known him forever. We've been friends for a long time. And he's got great back, great pecs, great legs. His arms are like my wife's, like, like, <laughs> and and it's not for lack of effort, you know. And yeah, it's, it's yeah. the same for me. Same you know, for it's me. just, it's just, you know, and he's chosen not to put anything in there, and I commend him for that. You know, um, he probably could have turned pro if he had arms, because yeah. he's really missing nothing else. Um, it, it, I, I'm not an advocate for it. I mean, if, if you've gotten to that point, then bodybuilding just isn't for you. But like, fuck, I'm five, three and change. Basketball was not meant for me. Yeah, I could know yeah. yeah for sure. I, don't want to. I can't play in the, NFL, the, the NBA, you know? It's just not meant to be. So why do that kind of crazy shit? I, I don't, I think it looks terrible. I think it's very dangerous. I don't think that there's a coincidence between some of the deaths that we've seen in bodybuilding and um, site injection, site enhancement oils. Um, you know, a lot of those guys end up with kidney issues and, and um, because that shit don't go anywhere. And, yeah. You have that guy yeah. on your channel. Is it, uh, is Jerry Blay? Is that his name? Jerry Blaze. Yeah. Uh, so you can check out Jose's uh, channel on YouTube, Boston Mass. He does yeah. like a two part interview with the guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, just a local guy. I don't know him at all, but he just shot his arms up like Greg Valentino style. Yeah. And oh, with, with gear or with um, S years? Who knows? You know, he was everything. He hadn't touched this stuff in 10 years, and his arms were still just a bag of oil. And he said he hadn't done anything in, in like a good 10 years. It was just permanently well, like, like you'd have to go to the knife to fix it. I was doing a bunch of interviews and like workout videos and. Some of them would get, you know, backstage videos. I'd get 10,000, 20,000, sometimes up to 40,000. I did an interview with this guy. He's got like 500,000 views. Wow. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah, just because everybody wants to hear this shit. Yeah, like, yeah, like, what were you about? thinking? It's yeah. a serious, he's the nicest right? guy. I've known him a long time. 
he's a awesome awesome guy and that's why i did the interview because so many people talk shit about him he's actually a great guy and he's a trainer and he, he loves people he people he just, talk shit about his personality or just because his arms look just because of his arms oh, okay gotcha. uh, it must and, have been like oil or something, right? Like his gear would have absorbed absorbed into his arms at some point. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you have to go check out the interview and, and see his arms there. Yeah, I'm gonna go check it. And out. they're stone, like like hard as hell. You touch them, and it's it's not normal. Like uh, I feel bad for him because they're not going anywhere. Yeah. And he's seventy five year old man. He's gonna have. 23 inch arms like that look so great. unless unless Shit. unless you unless you wanted to get it drained you think you could possibly get it drained if you ever no. wanted to no he no would if it's oil it's though removed. yeah you'd have to have surgery to because there'd be so much scar tissue everything formed and solidified right. there yeah right no that makes sense ouch well, listen guys this has been fun um yeah it's been two hours Oh and, wow! Uh, I know we. There's a whole shitload of questions we didn't even fucking start, man. Yeah. Not, I can feel so bad. Okay, we're shooting but like shit. we're shooting the shit. That's why we call yeah. it. Shit. Let's do a let's do a a one minute round. Give Nate sixty seconds. Yeah, Nate fire the fire. Okay, okay. okay. Fire a uh, quick quick round. So Josh Joe in ninety five. Uh, this one's for Jose. What what would be your funniest Chris Acido like moment or? experience real quick oh god 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 just off the top of your head so many um funny? what one that comes to mind um probably it, i always laugh my ass off he'd come to my room and be like uh yeah yeah um i'm like christian i need some diuretic let me hit, hit some shots and i'd pose be like, oh, okay you know the capsules of um uh, of um the hell that Diazide? Diazide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I take Diazide. it, open it, pour it out, and hand it back to me. The empty one? Just trace them out. Yeah, he, every time he would do that, he would want to like... That's funny. You know, if, he'd empty it in my sink, and I'm like, I want to go lick it up. I'm like, do I need that? He's like, no, no, this is all you need. So I'm making like gel caps for my... Measuring. Yeah. Okay, next question is from Ares underscore 89. Uh, do you suggest cheat meals or just higher carb days when needed? Um, well, that's what a cheat meal is, is a higher carb. Right, day. but I guess what he means is would you suggest a cheat meals for someone or would you rather suggest like them doing a cleaner food source? Yeah. So we try to we kind of covered that earlier. I don't think yeah. I don't think anyone needs a cheat meal. It, that's like a mental thing. And yeah. and so it is to me I I would say increase carbs. If, if you're feeling wiped out, just increase. If you're having one cup of rice, add two and see how that goes. Right. You know, and, okay. see, and eventually you'll adjust to where you're functioning perfectly and you're not going to like ask for a cheat meal. Every right. once in a while you need that cheat meal. Mental. Yeah. yeah. What, was the, what was the name of the video with the guy in the arms? Or what was his name? Jerry, Jerry Blaze. All right. Yeah. I want to make sure okay. I watch it. <laughs> and, and I got one last one here. Um, and, and this one I'm actually going to direct towards Nate. And uh, this is actually a question for me. And it's how did you get the nickname Nasty Nate Tello? <laughs> from Jose. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Jose. That's, that's <laughs> a better story. I, I wish, yeah, like a, a bunch of X's or something came up with it. Nah, he's I nasty. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, like, I'm thinking in my head. I'm like, what did this guy do to get that nickname? I'm curious. But <laughs> nasty Nate and Ratchet Raymond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who nicknamed you that, Jose? I just did. Oh, this. <laughs> Yo, he's got bars, man. He's got bars. <laughs> I got it all. All right, we'll we'll have to set up a part two some other time. Yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah, I know. Thanks, Thanks man. I appreciate you guys coming great, on. Guys. We appreciate Thanks, you guys, guys coming on for sure. All right. All right. We'll talk Let's soon. See if this gets more views than all your other ones. If it's record breaking, then we're gonna get some uh stipend. Yo, and I for appreciate sure. that, man. I really appreciate you guys give us a shot, man. Yeah, yeah. That was all fun. Right. Okay. All right, we'll Have talk soon. Guys. Good luck, guys. See you guys. Bye. See ya.